What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another M21 set review. I got Rob here, as usual. And we're also recording this for both YouTube and Freshly Brewed, the podcast. So if you're listening on either of those platforms, thank you very much. If you're not, if you're listening on, on Freshly Brewed, definitely check out my YouTube channel. If you're listening on YouTube, definitely check out Freshly Brewed, the podcast. You can find it wherever podcasts are sold. You know, because they're, they're free. Sold? A, that was a joke. Because okay. the saying is, you can find them wherever this is sold. Anyway, oh. Rob, we're going to go through all the M21 cards. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I got like 30, 45 minutes. Let's get through them. Okay, Alpine Watchdog, what do you think? Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, okay, Angelic Ascension, what, Angelic Ascension, what do you think? Forward. It's it's crap. That's okay, crap. Annoyed, Annoyed Chorister, what do you think? Uh, that's that's draft chat. Okay. You don't have to do that. Why right, are we talking about it? <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, <laughs> let's start with... We're going to go... With this video, we're going to go through white, blue, and green, and black which is going to be about half the set. And then we're going to go through red, green, the colorless cards, the gold cards, and the lands, which is also colorless cards. So uh, stay tuned. Buckle in. Alpine Watchdog is the first white card. It is two mana, one and a white for a 2-2 dog with Vigilance. That's the end. It's like, that's like pitch, pick 10 in, uh, in your draft. Let's go. I mean, it's cute, and I like that they're just, they're just trying to pepper in some dogs. I think that's what their goal is. And that's fine. It's a cutie. It's a dog. I love it. It's not the worst card. It's not going to make my, my constructed deck. Angelic Ascension. Two mana, one and a white. And for an instant, Rob was a fan of this. Exile a creature or planeswalker. Its controller makes a 4-4 angel with flying. I think this is great. I mean, it's it's flexible. It's flexibility. That's why I think it's a great card. I agree with that. Like, you can, you can get rid of one of your own guys, make a great blocker or attacker. Uh, you can get rid of an opposing planeswalker. The cost of a 4-4 is high. Very. But... I mean, sometimes you just can't deal with a Tefri Hero of Dominaria or, you know, even a Tefri Time Raveler or, you know, like sometimes there's really, really good Planeswalkers that tick up to high amounts um, that you just need to deal with. And sometimes this is what you got. I mean, the other way to look at this card, too, that I think is interesting is the fact that it's an instant is if they have like a Tefri. Well, that's a <laughs> Tefri Breaks Rules of Magic. That's a bad example. Yeah, you're um... not going to be able to use this. That's, 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 that's really sad. But if they have a, another Planeswalker, you don't have to just nuke their Planeswalker with it. You know, you can EOT, uh, make a 4-4 and attack with it the next turn, too. It's evasive. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, you can definitely get rid of one of your own, like like a 1-1 one, one or something, and then mm -hmm. just attack their guy on their turn. Yep. Unfortunately, if they play Teferi, you cannot... If you use this in response to make sure you get it you get it down, they'll just blink your... No bueno. Yeah. So, this card's decent. Um, I wonder if it'll see play. I like that it exists. I like that. I like that it does stuff. Like, I, I mean, I think it's versatile enough that it's it's worth existing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense to me. I, I think it'll see play in in, uh, in small numbers. I think it's maybe like a, a two of, something like that, no mono white deck. Oh, that's also true. Like, if you have, like, a Narset and it has one counter on it, you could definitely just kill your Narset yeah. and make a 4-4. Four, four. Target your own guy, yep. Anointed Chorister, one white for a 1-1 one, one with lifelink. For five mana, four and a white, Anointed Chorister gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. So it can become a four, four lifelinker. Lifelinking human, that's kind of all I see here. I mean, the, the buff ability is nice, but, um, you know. I mean, in the late game, it's not nothing, right? Like in the late game, you got a four, four or a, a nine, nine, depending on how much mana you have. Or yeah. seven, seven, rather, not a nine. Yeah, nine. I was going to say seven, yeah. Seems okay. I don't, I don't love it. Again, it's like, again, it's not a bad card, though, right? Like, it's a card. That, like, as a 1-1 one, one lifelinker for 1, like, I feel like that's a card we've seen. But tacking on a plus 3, plus 3, like, it doesn't make it dead in the late game, which is a nice little piece of flexibility. Right, but I think I think in order to be standard playable, it would have to be a 2-1 or a 1-2. So, just not a 1-1. One, one. That's fair. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. I, again, I don't think it's standard playable by any means. I'm just saying, like, on the merits of the design, I think it's good. Right, I agree with you there. Aven Gagglemaster. <laughs> Come on. Everybody loves a good Gagglemaster. Totally. Four three flyer, for five mana three blue three white white. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life for each creature you control with flying. I mean, yeah. you're gonna gain at least two. So this guy comes into play, you gain two. If you go turn three lingering souls, turn four lingering souls. This guy, you're gaining ten. Which is That's a lot of life. There's probably other other stuff you'd rather be doing for five mana in uh, in that format. Maybe that's true, but ten life is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. This kind of reminds me of the uh, the angel that um, gains life for the gates. I'm real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Arcan yeah. Okay. Uh, this is this makes me really uncomfortable because because it's basically a um, it's a goose, 
with a goose head, but it has the body of a man? <laughs> like, what? I don't, yeah, like, it's just really disconcerting. Like, what does it look like without its armor on? It's got to look real weird, right? There's, like, no body. It's, it's just as thin as its neck the whole way down. <laughs> It's it looks really, like it has one leg. It's really just... No, that's just perspective. Stop it. All right. <laughs> anyway, Bane Slayer Angel. So his is, this is comical to me, right? Like, you have this five-mana flyer. for It's a 4-3. And then you have this five-mana flyer. That's a 5-5. Five, five, and it's just not even close, right? So, like, in any world you want to play Avon Gaggle Master to gain life, just play Bane Slayer. You're also going to gain life. You're going to gain 10 in two turns. So you'll be fine. What do we think of Bane Slayer Angel? Uh, I think it, uh, I don't think it's any good. Oh, that's wild. Don't think it's any good in standard. It's just, it does nothing to me. Does that seem wrong to you? Does it seem weird that we're in a standard form where Bane Slayer isn't good enough? I don't feel like we've had any conversations in relation to how good old cards are and, and, and these powerful text cards full of text are. So we can have a conversation about that if you'd like. I feel like you're being sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. Okay. 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 If you guys haven't done so, check out the previous Freshly Brewed where we talk about Standard and we talk about cards like Bane Slayer Angel and how it compares to something like Dream Trawler, uh, which is just head and shoulders better, unfortunately. Here's another card that I think is actually better than this, too. In, in, uh, it's been in Standard. You probably don't even remember it until I bring it up. But there's the five mana Flash Angel that's a 5 4 flyer yeah. that uh, saves your Angel of Grace, I think it's called. Yeah, and she, like, uh, you can gain 10 when she's in the art or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite cards, actually, from that set, when we were when me and Ollie were talking about it. Never saw any play, though, but... No, no. Hold on, let me mute my phone, because people are sending me textual messages. And uh, everyone in chat, just so you know, um, first off, I miss you guys, too, and I appreciate that you guys appreciate that I'm here. My, because I'm watching this as we're recording it, we're a little behind uh, when it comes, so if I answer you and it's from, like, a minute ago, that's why. Yeah, it's also because he he's still learning to read. So as he gets better, you know, you'll notice uh, he'll pick up some speed when it comes to your messages. <laughs> Love and crafty, thank you for the bits, buddy. I appreciate you. I lied last time. Basri Ket, we talked about Basri Ket a little bit on the podcast, so definitely check that out if you have not. Uh, one white, white for a three loyalty planeswalker, plus one, put a one one counter on up to one creature. It gains indestructible. Seems good. Negative two, whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. So if you attack with four guys, you make four 1-1s. Negative six, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 white soldier token, then put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. I love this card. I think this card's very strong. I love this card. This it card reminds seems so strong, but it doesn't seem too push. It doesn't seem overpowered. It just seems right. I agree. It feels like it hit a sweet spot. It reminds me a lot of Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord. Is that what it's called? Vengeful Bloodlord? Uh, that's the one that um, you can the, bring a creature back from the graveyard. You might be the, confusing it with a different one. The three mana one. What's the three mana one? Imperious Bloodlord? Oh, yes. The the vampire one. Yeah. yeah the, the mono black three mana one. Um, yeah. Because the plus one puts a counter on something. It also gives lifelink. Um, the negative two is a lightning helix, which is still good. Mm -hmm. And then like the negative six is like or like the negative three or four, whatever the whatever the negative one is, it puts like a, a vampire from your deck into play or something, which is or from your hand or something, something like that. It's very good, right? I think it's also a very good planeswalker. But this is kind of a little more. It's not as it's not as linear, right? It doesn't have to do with only vampires or only like soldiers or knights or something. Right. Yeah, I, I love this card. This is honestly, I'm not much of an aggro person, but this is actually one of my favorite cards from the whole set. I think this card's very good. I think this card's yep. going to see a good amount of play in any sort of like aggro deck that wants this effect absolutely so basri's acolyte four mana for a two three two white white uh it has lifelink it is a cat cleric when basri's acolyte enters the battlefield put two put a one one counter on up to each of two other target creatures you control so it's kind of like what's like support like it's, got, it's like support two yeah where you put two one one counters on things um you know it's fine it can't put it on itself i think if it could put it on itself it might be okay because then you could have a four or five lifelinker for four and then that versatility is nice but i don't yeah i don't even think um etb you have to have two other creatures to take advantage of this i don't i don't think this is this is playable in, in standard um it's, definitely it's probably not. pretty strong in uh in limited though or in popper you know or in pop papa 
Just kidding. I don't think it's going to be strong and popper. Popper is a pretty degenerate format, in fact. It's very degenerate, actually. Yeah. Does it being a cat matter? Probably not. Basri's Lieutenant. This is another card we talked about. I, I think this card is great. I'm going to raise my. Uh, it's four mana, three and a white, for a three, four, Vigilance, Protection from Multicolored. Uh, it's a human. When Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. When Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 one, one counter on it, create a 2-2 two, two White Knight creature token with Vigilance. And again, this is non. This is not even non-token, so even your, if your tokens have counters on them, they make more tokens. And if you go turn three Basri into Basri's Lieutenant, like, it's a I mean, you're putting a lot of counters on things. Yeah, this is very good. Um, the the protection for multicolored is nothing to ignore. That's a big deal. Um, it attacks their arrows. Um, obviously, it's great. It's it's resilience in your in your white deck for uh, wrath protection. Like this card's very good in my opinion. Yeah, and if you have two of them, it, they block your, your arrows pretty well too. Yeah, can't assassins trophy it. You know, you can't can't death sprout it. You know, death sprout. And, yeah, also, if you have two of these, then it would uh, you'd get double triggers then, too, when they, when they die, correct? Yeah, we talked about that, too, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, this card's great. I think this card is great. I think this card is a a, a slam dunk. Yep, and don't forget Venerated Loxodon is still a, a very real card. Yeah, don't... don't. Uh, what's the word? What's the term? Don't sleep on the elephant. I was going to say sleep, but I think there's I think there's something else I was looking for. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> don't, don't play yourself, I think, is what I was looking for. Is that what you're going with? Basri's Solidarity. Two mana for a sorcery, one and a white. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. That's fine. Mm. It's meh. I mean, like, if it was an instant, maybe better. I mean, obviously be better. Instant, just a... Usually a strict upgrade to sorceries. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. I'll play it in limited, for sure. Yeah. Put, yeah, put yeah, a 1-1 one, one counter on my gobs. All my, go all my gobs is good. Celestial Enforcer. This art's fantastic. 2-3... For a three mana human cleric, three, two and a white. Uh, for two mana, you can tap it and tap target creature. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with flying. So that's interesting. This is just bad, right? This is worse than the one, two for one. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, like, this yeah. is a very, very specific clause. Uh, it does nothing if you don't have a creature with flying. It's just a two, three. So, you know, I'm not, yeah, no. It's not, yeah, it's not uh, great, it guys. It needs to go away. It needs to go uh concordia pegasus one three flyer for two one and a white and uh that's neat S seen her before don't want to see her again containment <laughs> priest what are you doing one and a white for a two two with flash if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile it instead this is interesting because now containment priest is legal in modern it's legal in pioneer like, a lot of times, you know, you think about sets like this, or, uh, you know, cards like this, and you're like, oh, well, it's not going to see much play in Standard. But then it's like, well, think about, like, this is just a gateway to get it into older formats as well. Yep. So now you have this card in in those older formats. So, like, if you're trying to tr through the Breach something, if you're trying to Goryeo's Vengeance something, like, you know, Containment Priest is another another outlet to to prevent that. It's just a great card to add to a Hate Bears deck, um, which obviously has always existed in modern Um it's a great card. I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's too late for modern to really be impactful. Elaborate on that. What What do you mean by that? No beats. Oh, uh, I think they're just saying modern's dead. I don't know, that was the impression I got. Daybreak Oof. Charger is the next card. One and a white for a three one. So your typical two mana three one. But when Daybreak Charger enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two plus zero oh until end of turn. This is interesting. Because a lot of times you have the cards, like the dinosaurs, like the raptors that are three ones for two with no text. Yeah. They're just vanilla. So you look at a card like this, and like now you have an incentive in the late game, right? So like, you know, if I draw this on turn seven, I still get a nice enters the battlefield bonus for another creature. So I, I kind of like this. This is like, um, it's like, it's like there's kind of like a theme so far where there's a couple cards that kind of scale up well in the late game. So like if you draw them on turn 10, it's not just a blank. Yeah, I don't think this necessarily scales, but I, I get the point that you're trying to say. It's value. Um, it's 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 cool. it's value on a later turn than two. Yeah, the the one thing I will say is, even though this does kind of look bad on its on the face, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> looks bad on the face, guys. Yeah, uh, a three power for two mana has always generally been pretty strong in the right decks. 
Yeah, I think it's just fine. Like, I mean, you'll play this in limited. I mean, again, again, constructed, you're, you have a, a much higher, uh, you're much, you're, you have much more competition. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's what it is. I, I'm just saying, I like the the incentive that you have, so that if I draw my my rap my raptor in the late game or my my lion or whatever those cards are, the three ones that are for two, it does have something. It's going to do something on the turn it comes into play for something else. So yeah. Defiant Strike, another card we've seen. I'm pretty sure is this legal and standard right now. Yes, plus it is. one plus O oh until end of turn. Draw a card. I mean, if there's a deck that wants this, they'll play it. Usually, you want to have some sort of incentive like Feather. Like you don't just want to play this as like a, you know, as a card in your deck because it just it's just a cantrip with a pretty weak ability. But you know, if there's a combo, then I'm sure it'll find a home. But yeah, whatever. Dub. <laughs> yep. uh, Two and a, and a white for an enchantment creature. This is also in Dominaria, I believe. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, has first strike, and is a knight in addition to its other types. So, I mean, like, there's definitely a knight theme in this set. So, this just goes along with that. I don't think it's... I think it's just kind of knight filler. Yeah. This is just a knight filler card, you know? Yep, I don't think this is... Uh, you'll see this card. Faith's Fetters. Four mana, three and a white for an aura. Enchant permanent. When face Fetters enters the battlefield, you gain four life. Enchanted permanent can attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Yeah, we talked about this one already too, and it's while it's cool to have it come back, like we, we I just think that there's better options. Huh. Interesting. You don't I agree? think Face Fetters is great. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't I don't think So like I mean I play Face Fetters in like in like Legacy and Vintage Cube, you know? Like this card still just shuts down everything, right? And, it does. Um, it it does. does hit Planeswalkers. It hits pretty much anything you want. And, um, I mean, it does a similar thing, like, to Banishing Light, right? Like, it's it's not, like, a, a different card. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, the four life is not nothing, you know? No, f- four life is, is actually, a, it's a lot. Four, four is a lot. And if you have a way to blink this or... And it can um, hit lands, which is not nothing. So if there's creature lands, if there's mm-hmm. mutavolts, um, you can put it on a land. So Interesting. I don't know. I think Face Fetters is just a good, solid card. It's always seen some play, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was also... If it also seen play, so... Yeah, I don't think that this is a card we'll see three or four of in a deck, but it would not surprise yeah, one or me two if, for if sure. one showed up or two yeah. randomly showed up in the right deck. Or even in sideboards, like against Mono Red. Like, I mean, you can play Banishing Light on three, Face Fetters on four, gain four life. Yeah, yeah. Falconer Adept. Four mana, three and a white for a two-three human soldier. When it enters... When it attacks... Create a one-one white bird creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking. This actually seems pretty good. Not in constructed. It's too much for constructed. Two, three, four, four. But in limited, like yeah. being able to make Dang a one-one bird every turn, it's pretty good. Hey, Saru, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. We'd have to see also um, how the limited format shakes out to where what is the right uh, amount of power and toughness that you want. You know, if three is the is the sweet spot, then you know if this thing can continuously attack in and make birds, it's it's very good and limited. Yeah, also, if you can give this thing, like, if you put, like, a dub on this... Yeah. Plus two, plus two, and first strike, then it's just a four or five first striker that makes a bird every turn. That's pretty good. It also becomes a human soldier knight, uh, which is, like, the trifecta of all that is good. It's true. That is That is that, that covers all of the white uh, creature types that, that are relevant. Correct. And you're making birds, so even, you know, it's even got another creature type <gasps> there that's relevant. Feet of Resistance. This is a card from Cons of Tark here, and the art has not even been updated because this is Cons art. Two mana, one and a white. Put a one-one counter on a creature you control. Another another card that plays into the token, the the counter theme. It gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. This card was great in Cons Limited. It's pretty much a bomb. Uh, I don't think for two mana you're going to see much playing Constructed because it's just there's, there's usually better options for like one mana. Yeah, but. Uh, card's still very good. It's still good. Um, so don't put it in your constructed deck. Definitely pick it up highly and limited. And uh, we'll see. Protection is def- protection is definitely a real thing. Um, oh yeah, that basically makes it a counter spell, right? Like I mean, you're countering yeah. any removal spell. You're you're making sure that you win any blocks. So. Yeah, but as Chup said in chat, God's willing exists as well. So agree. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, there's usually always a one mana counterpart for a card like this, and I don't think the one pl- the plus one plus one counter is worth the extra mana. Because a lot of times if you're putting creatures in your constructed deck anyway, they're going to be big enough or good enough on their own. Yeah. You know, so you're not trying to like, 
you're not trying to play you're not trying to slam your two three into their three three and construct it you know usually your guys are good enough so you know usually want the mana reduction fever feeder resistance very good and limited though so mm-hmm. gale pooper oh swooper <laughs> three two for four so i'm already i'm already priced out of constructed here three and a white flying when it enters the battlefield target creature gains flying until end of turn this is a very common trope as well like this 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 four or five mana flyer that gives another creature flying for <clears> the <throat> turn it's usually yeah. fine i mean like you got to consider like azure drake is like a, a, a snapping drake things like that are like um staples the three two flyer for four is is pretty much a staple in limited so like this guy giving another creature flying is just a bonus on top of that yeah I don't, so. yeah it's just draft chaff yeah it's fine uh glorious anthem interesting three mana creatures get creatures you control get plus one plus one interesting this is a very interesting reprint um we've seen three mana anthems played in standard in the past before so it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if it's played um but again, it's something you gotta see if it fits in somewhere. Right, that's the thing. Like, if you're spending three mana on a card like this, like, is it better to just have Basri? Yes, it is. The answer right? is yes. Right, like, I mean, like, right, exactly. Like, you, you have to consider, like, okay, the card itself is good. I would love to have it on the board, right? Like, if you're, if, if, if you're, if I'm having a white aggressive deck, like, would I rather have this on the board or not? Yes, obviously, I would rather have it on the board. I think it's a benefit to my, my deck and my cards. But you have to consider, like, the, the opportunity cost of playing this, like, are you going to take a turn off? Or are you going to have it as a card in your hand? So, Yeah, while this does seem good with Archon uh, Valley, um, I, I don't think that's something that that, that kind of deck would play. Um, because generally, they're, the fact that they're Pegasus coming as 2-2s, two I don't think them being 3-3s three threes, three threes is extremely relevant. Well, no, but th- this also triggers it, wouldn't it? Because it's an enchantment. Right, right. No, I, I mean, I got that. But I think, there's, I think you'd rather be casting a Faith Fetters, getting a 2-2, two two, and dealing with a permanent versus... Just buffing your dudes. I I agree. When the, when the sole ability of the card is to buff your guys, I think there are better things to be doing. Mm-hmm. All right, that's fair. Griffin Airy, two mana, one and a white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a two two white Griffin with flying. Face Fetters coming back, boy. Got him. I like what... this card. I do too. I think it's not that hard to gain three life a turn. And a 2-2 flyer is actually a really good value. Like, typically cards like this do see play. Like, Drakehaven, Sa- yeah. uh, S- Sacred Mesa? Mesa Sanction? What is that card called? Oh, the yeah, one? yeah. The, you're talking about the one that you can pay mana to make a... Uh, that makes a Pegasus? Yeah, what's that? I, I can't think of the I name think it is, it's sacred. I think it's Sacred Mesa. But that doesn't make sense because it is Sacred Mesa. Yeah, I think it is Sacred Mesa. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's Sacred Mesa. Right. Like, like typically cards that make flying creatures in standard... Uh, for no mana cost are usually they usually see play you know what i mean like yeah or for for low mana cost rather so like even drake haven was was it was a card that that made it into a deck and this isn't re- it's not like this is actually really bad in multiples you know this is this card's pretty good i think no if you have two of these out like you're making two gr- like two two twos a turn they're for two two flyers like this card's decent plus like it the the qualification to make them is gaining life which means you're actually being rewarded for helping yourself survive yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, you're not just sitting there dirtling. You're like, all right, I'll gain six this turn. You know, you're still making one, but like, you're probably surviving or negating any attack that they made, right? So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. This card seems sweet, and I'm surprised it's uncommon. It actually feels like kind of a rare because we've had so many um, spoilers out uh, recently. There, there's probably I, I've probably seen like 85 percent of this set. This is a card I, I have not seen until just now, and and I really like this card. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so do I, actually. So do I. Griffin Airy, best card in the set, guys. You heard it here first. Brood. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build something on this. I forgot a thing where I was, where I write down the cards we like. So I'm gonna I started that now. Uh huh. So we'll just have to. You go want back me to go to... back? No, no, yeah, not I'll... now. No, not now. Okay. Idol of Endurance, two and a white for an artifact. When Idol of Endurance enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards with command cost three or less from your graveyard until it leaves the battlefield. Okay, sure. So this, this this strikes me as a very like uh, like uh, rally the ancestors type card where it's like affecting all the low creatures in your graveyard. Uh, two mana and a tap, one and a white. Until the end of turn, you may cast a creature spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Is this better than is this better than the companion? Than Luris? Yeah, it's harder to kill. I mean that's that's a given because it's a, yeah. it's an artifact versus a creature. Um. 
I mean, it's definitely harder to kill, but it, it, this is also three mana or less, which is better. I think this may be better than Luris. Luris is if only we're not two playing mana. it as a companion. Is this Luris? Luris is permanence, though, not just creatures, right? Yeah, obviously, because you get Black it, it, Lotus. It like, this is yeah. just creatures. So that is a significant difference. Um, I don't know what I think of this card. Maybe it's just too much to set up. Could just be too much to set up. It might be, because like you have to consider, you have to have at least two or three creatures in your graveyard for this to be good. Yeah. So, it, like, this costs three mana, but you're likely not playing this until, like, turn six or seven, right? Yeah. Here's another thought, though, another way to look at this card, too, now that we're kind of talking about it, is um, generally when you're playing, like, white aggressive decks, post-board versus decks that are full of sweepers, you generally want to have, you know, some card like, uh, I can't remember, three mana instant that has addendum that puts a 1-1 counter on all your dudes and makes them indestructible. Oh, uh, Unbreakable Formation. Correct. You want cards like that, right? Because th when the turn comes and if you have that ready to go, uh, you basically pretty much win the game when when you, when you they try to wrath your board and your, your dudes survive. However, this card is different because it allows you to not have to hold up mana in order to utilize it. So your board gets wiped next turn when they're tapped out, you cast this, and it gives you access to everything that just died. So in a way, this doesn't actually seem that bad. I mean, yeah, I agree, but also putting, putting like, one dude into play a turn, it just doesn't seem that great, but also they can kill mm -hmm. it. I don't know. Like, there's a lot going on. It might be too much. It might be too much to get going. Too clunky. So here's the thing. It says, until the end of turn, you may cast a creature spell from among them with cards exiled with idols. So if I tap to and activate this, okay, the ability's on the stack. If they kill this in response, um... You don't get to cast anything, right? Because the creatures go back to the graveyard. Uh, exile all creatures until this leaves the battlefield. So the creatures go back to the graveyard once this dies. Your ability from Idol of Endurance resolves. And then you may cast an, a creature spell from among the cards exiled. And then there's no Because they would no longer be exiled. Yeah, it, right. So, like, I'm pretty sure if they kill this in response to you activating it, you don't get to do anything. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. It's kind of meh. I, I like the design. I think it's cool. But I, I, I'd really need to see it in practice before I'm, like... Too clunky. Sold. Right, because, like... Playing this in the late game to put, like, a three cast or less cost into play is just not super impressive to me. Yeah. You know, I'd rather just have another Baneslayer, to be honest with you. Like, if this was Baneslayer, I'd rather draw Baneslayer. Sure. You know. All those donuts I ate for lunch aren't sitting well, Kerwitz says. <laughs> How many are we talking, man? <laughs> Legion's Judgment. Three, two and, a, two, and, two and a white, three mana. For a sorcery, destroy target creature with power four or greater. So this is basically just, like, neck snap. But it costs... Three mana instead of four, and it's a sorcery instead of an instant. We, we see this constantly. Nothing to get excited about. Yep. Moving on. Light of Promise. Two and a white. Enchanted creature has, whenever you gain life, put that many 1-1 one, one counters on this creature. Uh, probably excellent and limited in the right deck. I mean, excellent. Yeah, I mean, you put it on your flyer, and, like, it's... But, I mean, like, again, you have to gain... You have to have a lot, bunch of gain life cards in your deck, which is not ideal. Um... It, put on your Bane Slayer Angel. That's pretty cool. She gains five, plus five, plus five every turn, right? <laughs> you probably already win in that limited game, anyways. I agree with you, but yeah, this is you your neck snapped. This, <laughs> yeah, unless you unless you face the Legion's Judgment, another another excellent card here. Uh, Light of Promise. Yeah, it just basically turns your creature into a Johnny's Pride Mate, right? Yeah. Makeshift Battalion, three mana for a three two. Whenever it and at least two other creatures attack, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Makeshift Battalion. This is another reprint. We've seen this card before. Nothing super special. I'm not... Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Whatever. Yeah. See you later, Makeshift Battalion. Mangara the Diplomat. Now we're now we got an exciting gem. 2-4 lifelinker for 4 mana, 3 and a, three and a white. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you or a Planeswalker you control, draw a card. So if at least two creatures... Let's let's just look at it in a two-player game, right? If at least two creatures attack you, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. What do you think of this guy? Um, man, this is interesting. I I don't think this sees play. Really? Four mana is too expensive. Interesting. I mean, I don't I don't disagree with you that four mana is expensive, right? Like. I mean, Mangara, I believe Mangara was from Mirage, and then, uh, I believe Mangara is also a he. Um, Did I, I say she? Mangara is a he. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, 
I, I don't yeah. I don't think he's playable. I, yeah, I don't think he's playable. The the sec to me the second condition the whenever the opponent casts their second spell each turn that's, that's a lot. Kind, yeah, that's kind of I mean that one doesn't really um, make me feel real real good about this card. Obviously the the attacks with two creatures seems more relevant, but man, I'm more worried about getting beat down by six six arrows than getting run over right now by multiple creatures. Well, six six arrows are definitely a thing. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think you're right. I think the stats for a two four lifelinker for four are just not as good. I'd much rather have a face fetters and just put it on their uro. You know, like that seems is, better to me. Yeah, is this thing bad at at three mana? Like, is this thing too much at three mana? Is it even playable at three? I don't think so because I think the triggers to make this to make this work are <clears> just <throat> so specific, right? Like, I mean, whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. Like, how many times is that going to happen? It doesn't it feels rare? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. And also, two or more creatures have to attack you. Like, even that's not super common. Like, opponents have one Uro in play, or like, yeah, you know, or one, or one, the, one Dream Trawler, you know? Yeah, or the decks that are attacking you with two or more creatures generally don't want to be attacking into a two four. You know, two is relevant power to to kill. You know, those low to the ground decks, and a four is that's a big butt. Yeah, and I think I think that more than likely your opponent's just going to be like this is this is literally says your opponent can only attack you with one one creature, you know. Mm -hmm. That's I, you're never I think you're never going to draw a card from from you're rarely going to draw a card from either of these abilities. Let's say. Yeah. Anyway, that's sad. Nine lives. This is a this is an adorable art with a cat on it and nine other other cats in the in the in the eight other cats. Oh, there's. Oh yeah, you're right. Eight of the cats in the Mufasa, in the Mufasa style. One white white three mana for a hexproof enchantment. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on it, exile it. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Interesting card for sure. It is interesting, and it's like I was like, oh, maybe you can blink it, but if you can't blink it, because once it loses, once it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So you you're you're kind of kind of you're kind of stuck with like having to to deal with the counters, you know. In standard, I don't see an application for it, um, but obviously this is a this is a lock with solemnity. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Unless they kill the solemnity. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this goes right into the uh, like the the mono white auras deck in modern, right? sure he doesn't he doesn't think so mm -mm. okay i don't think so okay well, what really you know you seriously don't do you not think that's a deck or do you not think that's a i don't think that's a deck i mean it's definitely a fun deck that people i've, I've literally written like four articles about that deck it's definitely a fun pet deck that people play in modern i mean again we're not talking about pro tour decks man this is this is we do freshly brewed we don't do oh that's freshly right. competitive pro oh. deck you have a literal Twitter account called MTG Jank, <laughs> and you're going to be like, I don't think the enchantment deck in Modern is a real thing. <laughs> like, what's a real thing to you then? Re rewind this back. Ask me again. Hey, man, do you think this... Do you think This, this absolutely <laughs> slots into the, the enchantment deck. <laughs> oh, my God. MTG Jank here, who does not believe in any jank whatsoever. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I like this card a lot. I think it's cool. I think the art's good. I think the, the flavor is good. This card is a 10 out of... A 9 out of 9 lives. I don't think this card wrecks cycling because cycling it just says you have to be dealt damage by nine um nine nine different sources, right? So like one one tokens are a thing. Yeah, I mean I think if you're talking about Zenith, then it's like it's cool because it, it'll block the Zenith. Yeah. But like they do make a bunch of one ones too, so yep. pack leader, a dog, a one two for two. We're already on point. This is a great stats already. Other dogs get one one. It's a dog lord, boys and girls. Whenever a pack leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Oh my god, I love it, dude. That's so that's so that's a, such a good effect. I love it. Yeah, he's the pack leader. He's protecting his pack, man. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to dogs. So all your dogs are just like even himself. Oh wow. Yeah, you just get. The I thought it was all other dogs. Him. Oh, this no, is just... great. So yeah, he's just a really two good. two for two that like when he attacks he can't be dealt damage. Yeah, and all your dudes can't be dealt damage. I use a pack freely. Own. Oh man, pack leader's going on the list. Try and stop me. <laughs> yeah, that is a majestic, majestic mustache. It's beautiful. Katie wants actually. Katie wants to get a print of this. I would love to find the original art, but I think that's gonna probably be highly coveted. So, mm. uh, yeah. All right. So rambunctious mutt. 
<laughs> this art is also fantastic. Little dog rolling around. 3-4 for 5. So it's not Baneslayer stats, guys. 3 white, white. When Rambunctious Mutt enters the battlefield, destroy an artifact or enchantment opponent control. Okay, not bad. Um, it's it's kind of acidic slime-like. I mean, this is just a wanted effect, right? It's five mana, which is a little higher. It reminds me of... There was a green one. I forgot the name of them. But they were 4-4 four, four for five. Conclave Naturalist or something like that. Um, this is a 3-4 for five. So, you know, a little worse. But sometimes you just want to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. So, I don't know. I think there's more effective ways to do it at five mana. I agree. Or less less than five mana. Right, exactly. For sure, for sure. I mean, there might even be less effective ways, more effective ways to deal with it in standard, right? So, yeah, that actually is a great point. This would have been really cool if they made Rambunctious Mutt a uh, color shifted version of Rex Age, make it a two one dog for three. for three. That would have been cool. I agree. That would have been good. Yeah, they messed, they messed up. Revitalize another reprint, two mana. You gain three life. Draw a card. An instant. Not bad. Not bad. I'm. I mean, I think you misread the card. You forgot the part that says pay two mana, add instant speed on instep. On their on their instep, you gain three life, draw a card, and make two two flying that's, Pegasus dude. That's or true. Whatever. This fits right into our into our Griffin Airy deck. Yes, sir. So that's pretty good. I like it. I like this card. This card was good. This card saw play in standard when it was legal. So, yep. I think when you have a card like Griffin Airy, that's two mana. And two mana is also real cheap for Griffin Airy. You just play it on two. Yeah. And all of a sudden, their face fetters gain them a 2 2. Their revitalized gains them a 2 2. I like it. I like it. I'm all in right now. Ruined Halo, my dude. What do you think about <laughs> this guy? Uh, I think it beats Zenith Flare, that's for sure. <laughs> Ruined Halo, white, white for an enchantment. As Ruined Halo enters the battlefield, choose a card name. You have protection from the card name. So you can you can say Zenith, is it Zenith Flare? Uro. Uro. Uh, Dream Trawler. Expansion Explosion. Expansion Explosion. This is a nice card. This card is good. This is also a reprint from Lorwyn Block, as you can tell from the weird Kithkin art that they didn't change. It's weird that they have all the art in this set from like the previous sets, because the does it like there's no flavor kind of like um, synergy, right? Like it's all like yeah. you have like Ixalan art, you have Khan's art, you have Lorwyn art, whatever. Maybe Rude that's good. Maybe it's supposed to be that way because it's a it's a corset, you know. Sure, it's a, it's a mishmash. Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Shrines are back. That's kind of interesting. One mana shrine. It does nothing <laughs> until you pay six. Tap target creature. This ability costs one less for each shrine you control. So it costs five immediately, right? Because you control one. So it never costs six. That's that's weird to me that the ability is six, but it will never cost six while it's in play. Yeah, you're right. That is interesting. You know what I mean? It's always going to be four and a white if this is in play. Um... The other problem I have with shrines is I I like the idea of shrines, but my problem is is they're all legendary, That's and I true. get I get that they're OP. Like if you have like um, the Honden that draws you cards, like you just can't have multiples of those. But it just seems like an inherent flaw in the cards themselves. Right, because like how many do you put in your deck? You want to maximize the number you draw, because that's what they're trying to make you do. But then they're legendary. So like if I draw two of the white ones, I'm like, okay, cool, I drew a blank. I can't play yeah. this. Yeah, it really dis it's 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 a weird tension where like they want you to draw multiple shrines, but they also don't want you to put multiple shrines in your deck because they're legendary. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think this card's that great, so No, no. Seasoned Hollow Blade. This guy's gonna cut his hand. This is not a safe <laughs> way to hold your sword. One and a white for a three one. Discard a card, tap Seasoned Hollow Blade, it gains Indestructible till end of turn. So not bad, you can block, make him Indestructible, you can attack, make him Indestructible. And tapping him is very reminiscent of Regenerate, which would tap the creature when you when you'd pop this your Regeneration is, Trigger. I think this sees play in a in a Mono White deck, uh, because it's a 3 power for 2, that can you can uh, jam through a, um, a Wrath. It also reminds me a lot of... Mm-hmm. The yeah, one you, one that gets plus two plus zero when correct. it attacks. I can't think of his name, dude. Adanto. Adanto Vanguard. Adanto Vanguard. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This definitely reminds me of Adanto Vanguard a lot. Yep. Yep. I think this guy's fine. I think you put it on the list. I, I think this is I did. Play. It's on there. I did. Secure the scene. Five mana. XL target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a one one white soldier for each token. Exiling any permanent is not bad. Um, the problem is we already have this effect in face fetters. <laughs> And in Banishing Light, 
and that does not give your opponent a token nor does it cost five mana so i'll play this in limited i'll be sad that i'm giving them a, a one one because why am i doing that for five mana but uh you know what are you gonna do yeah i hear you holy shit frank is still alive what does that mean i've literally streamed for the past four years frank, it's good to see <laughs> you again. Know what that means selfless savior one white for a one one God, this card breaks my heart. Sacrifice Selfless Savior. Another target creature you control gains indestructible till end of turn. Uh, this is good in a, in, a, in, a pup, in a pup deck. I want you to read the flavor text, Rob. <clears throat> <clears throat> she raised him from an orphan pup and gave him a life of love. With his last act, pause, he thanked her. Pause was also a dog reference. So <laughs> inadvertent. Yeah. And uh yeah, I don't know. This card's probably not gonna see a ton of play. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean it's only it, it sees play if there's a if there's a dog deck, right? A pup deck. Yeah, I mean like it's it reminds me of the one three from uh Ravnica. It was one of the Ravnica sets, right? The one three that like uh the defender right I, I it reminds i'm thinking of when i see this card i think of the knight the uh what the two one knight for one that has the same effect Dauntless oh yeah Dauntless, but that is oh that is only yeah I, that is only knights though whereas this is any creature you control it reminds me of also benevolent bodyguard you know yes, like benevolent yeah. bodyguard was one one sacrifice that a creature you control gains uh protection from a color of your choice which is pretty much the same as indestructible when you're using it yeah Resolute Watchdog was the card I was thinking oh, of, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I think this card's fine. I I think if there is a dog deck, it's going in there. So I'm gonna put it on the list. Plus that flavor text. <laughs> it's so funny good. to say it's funny to say dog deck. If there's a dog deck, it's going in there. Yep. Anyone Siege. who sacrifices this card gets gets anyone who sacrifices this card against me gets a face punched in. God Oof. Jesus, that's so aggressive. Siege Striker. Three mana for a one one. Double strike. Whenever Seed Striker attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Seed Striker gets plus one plus one for each creature tapped this way. It's a lot of it's a it's a big cost, man. Yeah, and it's only a, it's only a one one. Like make it a one two. I mean, make it so a two weak. two for three. Maybe that's too good. I don't know, man. I think they're very like I think typically with Wizards is very timid with double strike, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like they're always like, all right, well it's double strike, so let's give it one tough, one power because two power makes it four power, and that's too good. And then people complain that the card's too strong. Yeah, right. Like it's really hard to balance double strike. I guess. I don't know. What can you do? Yeah. But I, I was gonna say this being a human, I just I keep wishing that glorious anthem was the um, three mana um, all humans get plus one plus one and vigilance, and then this card would work wonders in that deck. It's not going on the. It's not going on the list. No, I wouldn't put it on the list. No. Speaker of the Heavens, one one for one. Vigilance, lifelink. Okay, I'm in. Tap it. Create a four four white angel creature token with flying. Activate this ability only if you have at least seven life more than your starting life total, and only anytime you can cast the sorcery. That's interesting. Again, if there's a life gain deck like this, I like that it has vigilance and lifelink. So you, if like I'm at twenty six life, I can attack with this guy, deal a point, and still tap it to uh to make my four four if, if you know if if that's how it works out so yeah as long as the um um what was the god the god that they just made the three mana god that gains you life you put one one counters on dudes in the life gain deck that's in standard right now god i can't think of his name i have no idea who you're talking about the the god the is it heliod yeah heliod that's right yeah yeah, yeah it's heliod like there there at times there have been heliod decks in standard right now um so I definitely think there's going to be a life gain deck. I definitely think because there's the creatures that say whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. Um, this card will see play, I think. It reminds me of the one four for two. That like whenever you cast an angel, you may, you gain four life or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it costs two. Yeah, I remember it. I can't remember the name, but I remember what card you're talking about. It's, I agree. It's recent. Yeah, like with the revitalized. Like I, this card has a lot going on, and. 
I think the price is right for one mana, and I don't think having more than seven more life than your starting total is actually that that much. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it, in the right deck, it's it's definitely in a, not. In a band deck, you can also play Uro, and like that's another three life a turn. Like Bishop yep. of Wings is the card. Yeah, there's Staunch Shieldmate one three for one mana. All right, Swift <laughs> Response one and a white for an instant destroy target tapped creature. This is another reprint. Um, it didn't see much play when it was legal. Like there's just a this is just a lot of competition for this spot. You know, you have like Gideon's Reproach. You have like, um, just lots of cards in this in this two mana spot that don't don't kill a creature straight away, but like kill a creature with like a disclaimer. You know, like if this do this right. So, yeah, I don't think this is play. Eh, what are you gonna do? Tempered Veteran one two and for a one and a white uh one and a tap put a one one counter on target creature with a one one counter on it. So you're doubling the one one counters. Or six mana and a tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. And it's probably cool and limited, but... Yeah, this doesn't seem any good. Yeah. I mean, it's just too expensive for a 1-2. If this is a 2-2, two, two, I'd be like, okay, cool, you're just a 2-2 two, two for 2 with nice upside. But as a 1-2, what are you going to do? Yeah, I don't, this, is, this isn't any good. Valorous Steed, 5 mana uh, for a Vigilance 3-3. Three, three. When Valorous Steed enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two, two White Knight creature token with Vigilance. It's just so expensive. I mean, yes, it's 5 five power, 5 toughness over 2 bodies, but it's just so expensive at 5 mana. I mean, like, you're never going to play this over, like, Baneslayer Angel. Like, when you have a card like Baneslayer Angel, it sets the standard for 5 mana, right? Yeah. Right? Like, so, I mean, like, you're never going to... if You're gonna, you're never going to play Valorous Steed over Baneslayer Angel. It's never, never going to happen. In Limited, this is great value, but... I mean, we're having the discussion as to whether or not we're playing Bane Slayer in the first place. So correct. So Valorous Steed is just never going to make the cut. Yeah, so. I do like the art though. It's kind of uh, the the hair on the unicorn is interesting. The hair on the it does have a beautiful. <laughs> that is a beautiful mane. I I meant all of it. Oh uh, wow. That's why I didn't say mane. Oh wow. I'm sorry. Oh excuse me. Excuse me. Here's a Vryn Wingmare. Here's a two one for three. Another reprint. Flying non creature spells cost one more to cast. This is just another hate bear. Um, I like this card. I think this card's great. I mean, this card is, it does exactly what it's a flyer. It's just a Thalia with, uh, with flying instead of first strike. Shua Gardner, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. And, uh, yeah. What? What are you going to say? I saw you. I think, I think, I think this, I think this sees play in sideboards. Um, I think there's going to be a mono white deck and I think this sees play. I can see it. And yes. For sure. Yeah, and this this is downshifted to uncommon, correct? Oh, that's little... interesting. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, this was a rare in uh, in previous set, and now it's an uncommon. So yeah, this seems fine. Oh, think about that. Think about going um, turn two Thalia into turn three Ringwear in Historic. That's kind of backbreaking in, against the right decks. I mean, that's an extra two mana on on all your spells. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Warded Battlements, three mana for an O three. Uh, it's a wall defender. Attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero. Oh. Okay. Just, just junk. I mean, I would just play Glorious Anthem over this, right? Then all my creatures get plus one, plus one all the time. Glorious Anthem can't block Goblin Guides. Oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> Cowards can't block Warriors. So, <laughs> what are you going to do? It's a, gladi it's a gladiator format. And that's all the white cards. All right. All right. So... And uh, be sure to check the description below. We'll have all the cards listed that we liked more than other cards. And uh, that stood out to us. So, Baron Talarian Archmage is the first blue card. One white, white for a 2 2. When, it's a legendary human wizard. When Baron enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. So, it's basically Aether Ouch. Adept. But, um, you know, instead you can bounce a planeswalker. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. So if you bounce one of your own things, you get to draw a card. This card seems great. I like this card a lot. I feel like it should have flash. I also felt that, but they can't all have flash, man. <laughs> Tefri has flash. Venser has flash. They can't just all have flash. I, I agree that it, I, I would love it if it had flash. Um, but I think it's just solid the way it is. You know what I mean? Like... Bounce your chupacabra, draw a card. Like, yeah, I mean, there's definitely plenty of things in in 
in standard historic that you'd want to be bouncing three mana two two is completely relevant because it ETBs draws a card right it's rogue refiner but also like what like it's also it also gives you the the potential to have like some sort of bounce deck where like ha- having your own permanence return to your hand is kind of like an engine right so yeah pouncing shore shark oh I like pouncing shore shark I love pouncing shore shark unfortunately you cannot mutate on the baron because he's human so oh that's sad that is sad. I want to see a Baron Shore Shark, but <laughs> pouncing Baron Shore Shark. All right, moving on. His name's Aaron. 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 With a B. With a B. Okay. Oh, bounce your Yorion. That seems pretty good. That seems good. And then you can blink Baron when you replay the Yorion. Bounce something else. Bounce the Yorion again. Oh, that's like infinite, right? Something like very slow infinite. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a soft lock. Cancel. Counter target spell, three mana. Sounds good. Okay. Capture Sphere, four mana, flash. Tap an enchanted creature when it enters the battlefield, and that creature does not untap. We just saw this too in Ravnica, so not super exciting. That was me pushing it over. Discontinuity. This is a card that's interesting to me. Three blue, blue, blue for an instant. So six mana. As long as it's your turn... This spell costs four less to cast, so it costs two mana if it's your turn, one and a blue. End the turn. So it's just time stop. It's exactly time stop, except if it's your turn, it costs four less. I looked at this card, and I was like, I was like, man, this really seems like it should be cool, and I should really like it. And I was like, I just don't think this is any good. And then... I looked at it from a different perspective where I said, uh, this is just a time this is just a take an extra turn spell. This is a time walk for six mana, correct? Yeah, it's just it's, it is it's, a walk the Aeons. Yes. And so now I'm intrigued and I want to uh, figure out how to play this card. It doesn't exile itself. I mean the thing is like this is this the end the turn cards are super versatile. They are counter spells. If your opponent plays Carnage Tyrant, you can play discontinuity, end the turn. Okay, cool. It's gone forever, and you don't get to do anything else. Um, if you want to do it during their upkeep, they don't get a draw step, they don't get a land, they don't get a they get to untap, but that's pretty much it. Um, you can also do it during your turn. So like, there's definitely things like if you're if you're at if you're at four life, right, and they go stoke the flames on your end step, you can discontinuity, and it's basically a counter spell, right, for two mana. You end your turn, you remove it from the stack. The the versatility of this card is very, very good. Yeah, okay, now now I have sad, because it does exile itself. Well, Thank sure. you all 13 of you for saying so. What does that matter? <laughs> well, because I was, I was looking at ways to loop it. Oh, man, no, don't be greedy. I don't want to be greedy with it. I just think it's a great value card. I think it's a it does a lot of things. Like, it, it works as a counterspell, an extra turn. Like, I think, it's, I think it's very versatile. I'm trying to take the weird stuff and get it banned, Frank. I'm not trying to take one extra turn okay well i think this card's great it's going on the list put it on the list oh i did it already you can't stop me enthralling hold three blue blue for an enchant creature you can't choose an untapped creature as this spell's target as you cast it you control enchanted creature so it's a five mana control magic for untapped creatures only it's not terrible i don't know what are you taking? Effect. What are you taking, though? You can't choose an untapped creature as this. Well, I mean, first off, generally you're going to use this on something that's already attacking at you. Probably that's not why you're taking it. But man, I don't. I don't know. So the problem with this card is you have to play it on the turn it co- that creature comes into play. Otherwise, it's probably going to be attacking on every future turn. If they have a Bane Slayer, you have to play this the turn after they play it. Otherwise, they're going to attack with Bane Slayer. It's going to go to your turn. You can't put it on there. They're going to untap their Bane Slayer, attack with Bane Slayer. It's going to go to your turn. You can't cast it. They're never no, going to un- it's never going to be untapped again, right? So, no, no, no. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Bane, well, first of all, Bane Slayer is vigilant, right? Bane Slayer does not have vigilance. Okay, but this says you can't choose an untapped creature. So when it attacks you, that's when you use it. Oh, you have to choose a tapped creature. Oh, yes. I just read it backwards yes. then. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, okay. So that does that make does it better. better. That does seem better. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's not bad. I wonder how many people have to... Oh, God, the, the number of people correcting me right now is just unbelievable. Yeah, um, 13 plus. 
What do you think? Do you think it's good? I think it's fine. You know, I, we always have effects of taking permanents in standard and we overlook them and they turn out to be broken. This card could be good. <laughs> I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the list just in case. Because I think a lot of the most recent ones, like Imbolus's Clutches was six mana. Um, but five mana seems significantly better. And stealing like an Uro or, you know, a, a, a Baneslayer even, like a Dream... I, you're never going to get a Dream Trawler, unfortunately, but... Actually, yeah, this is actually good to get. A, oh no, wait, does it get? Does it get hexproof or indestructible? Hexproof. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah. It's a real, it's a real piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frantic inventory. God, I love this card. Accumulated knowledge reprint. One and a blue. Draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of cards named frantic inventory in your graveyard. The first one. Is okay. It's a it's a cantrip for two. It's not great. It's a, it's a, it's the first card. The first one of these you play is the first half of a thing twice. Every future one is so much better than any counterpart they have. The second frantic inventory is a two mana divination at instant speed. Uh, the third frantic inventory is an ancestral recall for two mana. And the fourth frantic inventory is literally tidings at instant speed for two mana instead of five. Like this card is fantastic. I love this card, and I want to play it with the time stop card. Really? How come? Why? Why the two of them? Just because of the same color. Okay. Okay. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, this card's great. Um, uh, this is just a four of in, in every blue deck. The first one is is like negligibly worse than any future one. It's an instant. Like it's really never bad. Right. End of turn. I'll just draw one card. Big deal. It's, I'll cycle this. Every yep. future one is so much better. It's it's so fantastic. Yeah, uh, quick question. What do you think she's doing in that in that image? Looks like she's uh, she looks like she's stealing. She looks like she's stealing paperwork and looks like uh salamis maybe. Salami. I look at it as I she's either uh, cooking some octopus or giving it a massage. Well, I mean, you could give the massage to an octopus that you're going to cook too. So, right. So, it's not one or the other, Rob. Okay, it's both. Frost Breath, two and a blue. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during your controller's next untap step. Okie dokie. Listen, if we're if there was a deck um, back in the day that was taking extra turns and you against aggro matchups, you paid three mana and you tapped dudes down to get to the point where you can start looping your take extra turn spells. I'm not saying that exists because that card exiles itself, but I'm just saying this is not as bad as it seems because it's an instant. Well, I mean, also the card, I think one of the cards you're thinking of is like Exhaustion, which is I think is much better. No, of course Exhaustion's better, right? Because it's all permanents, but... Oh, Frost Breath does combo with the Steel card. You tap their creature and then you steal it. Yep. I'm not going to put it on the list, but I will respect the merits that you guys are, that, that you guys are com communicating here. Yep. Ghostly Pilfer. This card I like. One and a blue for a 2-1 Spirit Rogue. Spirit is a relevant creature type. Mm -hmm. Whenever Ghostly Pilfer becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do draw a card. So very very much like Key, of, key to the City. Right? Key to the City was like, make a dude unblockable, tap it. When it's untapped, draw a card. Um, except in the late game, you might just have an extra two mana. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. So if they flash something back, if they rebound something... Uh, discard a card, this guy can't be blocked. So again, it's like Key to the City. You make it unblockable by discarding a card, and then when it untaps, you pay two and draw a card. Yeah, it seems good. You, you pitch a land, and you untap and draw C2 cards. I think this card is great. I like this I, card a lot. I, I mean, agree. This seems like a pretty easy include in like the in like the Spirit deck. Yep, I like this. Like, it doesn't have flying, but it does have, like... it's You're either looting with it, or if they don't have a blocker, you're just drawing a card. Is it too strong with unblockable? Yeah. Yeah, David said this is a fine reprint, but I'm pretty sure he was referring to Frost Breath and not Ghostly Pilfer, so. Yeah, I agree. I think that's what I thought too. That's why I didn't uh, say anything. Jeskai Elder. One and a blue for a one two prowess creature. Whenever it deals combat damage, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So it's a looter. It's mm -hmm. fine. Looter scooter. <sighs> Thankfully it is not the looter scooter, because that's not a card I want to see in standard. This card's fine. It's whatever. I mean, it would have to fit in the right deck. Um, prowess is... We know that Prowess is a very strong effect. 
um, or ability, I should say. So I, I wouldn't discount it. Don't sleep on it, Rob. Correct. I will not sleep on Jessica Elder. Keen Glide Master. One and a blue for a 2-1. That's it. And you can tap <laughs> three. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. Good and limited. It's probably real good and limited. In uh, standard, no. 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 Nah. Library Larcenist. Three mana for a 1-2. Uh, <laughs> whenever Larcenist attacks, draw a card. That's interesting. Because typically this is like the Scroll Thief. Is that what it's called? Or like uh, Ophidian. Where like, if they're one threes for three, that when they deal damage, you draw a card. They've 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 printed better cards than this recently, right? There's the they printed the black one, which is two and a black. That's a two two, and it says whenever it attacks, oh, audacious you draw a card. thief, yeah, Did... yeah, that's a two two. That's a, that's the same thing, right? I'm gonna look that up right now. It, maybe it's maybe it's each player draws a card. Maybe that's why audacious that thief is good. three mana for a two two. Whenever it attacks, you draw a card and lose a life. Okay, that's just better. This is a one two that whenever it attacks. You lose a life. Or you draw a card, rather. You don't lose a life, rather. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, like you're losing you're 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 losing one power, but you're gaining you're not losing a life every turn. So I don't know. It's I don't think it's good enough. It's not. I don't think it's good enough either. Lofty denial, one and a blue. Counter target spell unless it's control pays one. If you control a creature with flying, counter target spell unless it's control pays four instead. This seems like an auto include in the Griffin Airy deck that we're talking about. I agree with you there. It's just a hard card to judge. Well, sensor, it's very much sensor without without cycling. Until you yeah, have but, a flyer and then it's better mana like it's a convolute. Yeah, com better convolute. Um yeah, I uh but again it's sensor sensor was only great because the you had the ability to cycle it late game. You draw this late game, it's just bad. Pizza Steve said not as good as Mana Leak, but that seems pretty obvious. I mean, like, that's Mana Leak's a hard card to compete with, so. There is something to be said, though, about the thought of um, whenever you're playing against a deck that has Mana Leak, like, you come to a point where you're like, all right, if they have Mana Leak, they have Mana Leak. I'm just going to jam it, right? But whenever you were playing, whenever we're playing against decks that are, uh, have uh, basically four spikes in them, they actually really change the way that you play because it's oh, like, sure. should I wait one more turn? Whereas for Mana sure. Leak, you're not going to wait three turns. Mana, so yeah, Force Force Spike is interesting because it it you you respect Force Spike whether they have it or not. Yeah, because yeah. it's so easy to play around. Like Mana Leak, you're like, well, I can't play around this. I can't wait three turns. So you'll right. run things into a Mana Leak. But Force Spike, you you say to yourself, well, I can play around a Force Spike, so yeah. I will. Yeah, that that's like a that's kind of like a, a the, the mind games that this card can can play, just like you know, um, the the cycling one did. It's 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 strong. Yeah, for sure. I think this card is good, and I also think like if you go turn one spectral sailor into oh. turn two lofty denial, then you just have a, a a hard counter most of the time, you know. Yeah, or or I mean, even on like turn three, you can literally, you know, they go Teferi, and you go, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast like if they're on turn four, you can literally go. I'm going to flash in my, my Spectral Sailor, and then I'm going to counter your Teferi, yeah. and you can't pay for it. I, I, I think this card's good. Yeah, I like Plus, it. Plus, like, uh, Force Spike is just not bad. People play things on curve. They they have, yep. I have four mana, I'll play my four drop. No one's no one's waiting till turn five to play their Questing Beast, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the fact that it hits any spell, very relevant. Yeah, agreed. Miscast, which does not hit any spell, but it is good. One blue, counter target instant or sorcery, unless its controller pays three. So typically you compare this with Spell Pierce or Dispel, right? Spell Pierce is any non-creature spell, they pay two. Dispel is hard counter and instant. This is counter and instant or sorcery, and they, they have to unless they pay three. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Or like I saw Go maybe ahead, not the best. No, no, you're good. Maybe not the best of both worlds, but like it is an <laughs> option. I saw a lot of people talking about this card on Twitter when it was posted. I just don't think it's any good. Really? I mean, it's one mana counter spell. Like I feel like one mana counter spells will always see play, but it's so it's so narrow. Like I think maybe you can see one or two in the sideboard at most. Like I don't know. Maybe in in older formats this card is is busted. So right now I kind of feel like mystical Thank dispute you. is better than this, right? I agree with you. But I think when mystical dispute rotates out, this has a real shot of just taking its place. Sure, but I mean, right now, Mystical Dispute is played as like a two of in, in main decks sometimes, or, or a four of in main decks. Yeah. So, so does that does this take that place? I don't think so. 
I don't think so either. Yeah. But I think historically this card is decent. I think for one mana, this is a good effect. I agree. I would put it on the list. I agree. Ah, uh, miscast. Done. Mistral Singer. This is like Rob when he's trying to serenade me. Oh. Three mana, two and a blue for a 2-2 flyer with prowess. I mean, like, again, this is a decent card in limited. Like, it's a strict upgrade to, like, an Azure Drake. Not, is it, is it Azure Drake? The 2-2 for... So Windrake? Windrake. Aven, it's Aven, is it Aven Windrake? I don't know. It's the 2-2 two, two flyer for three mana. Like, that's your staple, that's your typical, your staple standard, you know, rate, right? And this is just yeah. a 2-2 two, two for three with flying and prowess, so it's just better. And it's good. It's really good. It's really good. It's, re it's muy bueno. It's muy bueno, but it's not good in constructed. <laughs> opt. Um, you know what? I'll put opt on the list. Opt is absolutely. always good. Yeah. It's always good. We don't have to talk about it. Everybody knows how good Opt is. I'll see you Just later, Opt. Think about a deck, right, where your draw I'm spells are, 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 your filter spells are Opt and that frantic, um, inventory. The, the frantic inventory. Like, that's, that's just good. That's a I'm good eight it. spells. I'm thinking about it right now. That's awesome. I'm thinking hard. Pursued Whale. I love this. <clears throat> eight, eight for seven mana, five blue, blue. It is a creature whale. When Pursued Whale enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a 1-1 one, one red pirate creature token. With this creature, can't block, and creatures you control attack each combat if able. Spells your opponents cast that target Pursued Whale cost three more to cast. This is... This is... I love this card. What? This is Flavor City, dude. It's not great for Constructed. Don't get me wrong. It's a 7 mana, 8-8 eight, eight with no evasion. <laughs> um... It's, a, it's Moby Dick, though, right? Like, everyone, it gives your opponents sailors that are so, they're so determined to kill this that they have to attack it every turn. <laughs> but they can't block it because they're not good at catching it, right? They can't block it. They can't stop it. Yeah. And then, spells your opponents cast the target, it costs three more. Like, they have to use all their resources to catch this thing because they're so determined to do it. Yeah, that's funny. I so I didn't know that. That's what you meant when you were talking about how much you love it. I love the art on the card too, and I, I but this card is just hot garbage. But I love the art. Well, yeah, no, no. As far as as far as playability goes, this is not a constructed card. However, as far as flavor and design and art goes, this card is fantastic, and I love it. So, uh, relax and Sam in chat said, "Hey, they made Rob's mom into a card." <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> also, be sure to check out robsmom.co. It's a it's a sweet website that we made for Rob's mom. And uh, can we post a link in chat, please? <laughs> yeah, just go to command Rob's mom, and you'll get it. A sub is a sub is a sub is a sailor. She thick. Rain she of Revelation. This is actually one of my favorite format of draw spells. Like the fact that this is an instant. Wasn't this just printed in Modern Horizons? I don't know. I don't. I know, know this was reprinted recently. Yeah, Reign of Revelation was just printed in Modern Horizons. This is the first time it's standard legal. And this card was great in Modern Horizons. Four mana to draw three. Okay, so like five mana was the bar for Jace's Ingenuity, right? Five mana, you draw three cards. Four mana to draw three, and only discard one is pretty good. Like, I Very think this good. card's good. I don't actually know what our, what our, what's our alternative for this, this four mana this four mana area for drawing drawing cards and the alternative the alternative is um the three mana instant that you draw three discard two or, or discard the oh uh, the intro. thirst yeah, yeah yeah i got you thirst that's, of that's, meaning yeah i mean this seems almost just as good i would say I, like, no, I, I, yeah, I think I, I, in the, in different decks, they do different things. In any blue deck, I think this is better. In an enchantment deck, you're gonna have thirst of meaning, obviously, right? But oh, you can also discard a frantic inventory. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, because if you if you have a frantic inventory in hand, if you have two of them, uh, they're gonna net you three cards total. If you discard one of them for Reign of Revelation and cast the second one, it's gonna net you two cards. Um, but you, I guess you break even. I don't even know. That's a lot of math. I'm trying to. I don't know. I think this card is, as far as draw spells go, I, I'm surprised to see this in standard. It's a, it's basically Sift, but at instant speed, right? So it's just an upgrade to Sift. Yep. I like the card. Me too, surprisingly. Read the Tides. A sorcery for six mana. Five and a blue. Choose one. Draw three cards. Return up to two creatures to their owner's hand. See, again, like I like the versatility of this. If this costs five, I think this would actually be maybe constructed playable. 
Oh, I don't know about that. I don't either, actually, now that I say it. Yeah. But, like, you're, you're talking about draw th- three for five, which is the standard of, like, Jace's ingenuity or whatever. But, you know, I mean, returning two creatures is just a lot of times I don't want to return their creatures. What are you going to return? A Euro? Okay, cool. That's not great. You return Dream Trawler? <laughs> okay, sure. They're never going to, you're never going to resolve. You know, so, like, I mean, it's hard to, like, the creatures in standard, you know, what you return two lands from Nissa? All right, whatever. Yeah, this is just bad. Yeah, it's it's great and limited though. This card is great and limited. Draw three or bounce two creatures. That's fantastic. Very good. Rewind two blue blue counter target spell. Untap up to four lands. This is a reprint. I think this card's good. This card is good. I think it it was it will be played. I just think it's a one of or a two of at most in a deck. I think four mana for a counter spell is a lot, mm-hmm. but I think being able to go wilderness reclamation, untap my four lands. Rewind your spell, untap my four lands, night pack ambusher. I think that's good. Or rewind um, frantic inventory, frantic inventory. Yeah, that seems good too. I mean, like, just it's a free counter spell, right? Like I said, I think I think it sees play. It's it's one or two. Thank off. you. I think it's good in the Simic deck. The gaming champ. Thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Riddle foam. What, it's another reprint. Uh, one and a blue. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have Riddle Form become a 3-3 three, three Sphinx with flying in addition to its other types. And then you can scry, scry one for three. I think this card will see play. Really? I do. What do you What do you know, Rob? What do you know? I, I know nothing. <laughs> I, know, I know nothing. What are you, Jon Snow? I am not, but I know nothing. I, I just think this card sees hmm. play. I, it saw fringe play when it was in standard before. Um, I think that there can be a blue red deck that this card sees play in. It's it's evasive. Uh, three scrying one is not a bad thing to use your mana, you know. For should I put on the list? I think you should. I think that this sees play. All right, Rob, you heard it here first, guys. Riddle form, Tom Riddle form. <laughs> See him play. Roaming ghost light, three two for five, three blue blue, flying spirit. When Roman Ghost Lantern is battle for return to one target non spirit creature to its owner's hand. So it's just a it's just a mana war for five. Boop. I'll play it in limited every single day. Three two flyer for five. That bounces a dude is just excellent. It can bounce your own dude too. Oh wow. And then I'll draw a card with my Baron. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Rookie mistake, Rob. One blue. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus O plus two, and another creature gets negative two, negative O. No. No. I, I thought you were talking about my evaluation of the last card. I didn't nope, realize it was, was a card called Rookie Mistake. Card called Rookie Mistake. Yeah, let's go Let's go to the next one. Rob, do me a favor. Stop locking your knees as you strike. Now stand up and try again, okay? I don't know how to take that. Let's just go on. I understand. Rousing Reed, two and a blue. Enchant Creature. When Rousing Reed enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard a card. Okay, so it's like catalog. Is that catalog? Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. It's not terrible. That's a lot of things happening. Yeah, I don't don't think this is any good. It's interesting. Plus one, plus one, and flying on an enchantment is decent, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Draw two discard one's not terrible either. I don't think this is terrible. I don't think it's any good. It's just, it's so weird to evaluate because I don't think we've seen like text mashed together like that. Hmm. It does replace itself and it, and it's a loot. Yeah. Draw two, discard one. Plus you're getting rid of this. So it's, it's literally draw two, discard two. I think giving flying to a creature is pretty decent. I think that, I think it's, I don't think it's, I'm not going to put it on the list, but I don't think it's, I think it's playable. You heard it here first folks. Rousing read Franklin Lepore. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's playable. I think it's got Best a lot deck going on. Standard. I d- definitely didn't say that. Best deck. Sanctum of Calm Waters. Here's the blue shrine for four mana, three and a blue. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may draw X cards where X is the number of shrines you control. If you do, discard a card. So if you sh- if you control one shrine, you're looting. If you control two shrines, you're rousing reading. So drawing, uh, drawing two and discarding one. If you control any more... Sh- I was so proud of that. If you control any more shrines, <laughs> it's like you're you're basically just netting a bunch of cards, right? I don't think this is these cards are boop. I don't think so either. I think it's cute. You're gonna have your casual players playing their 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 shrine decks, but what are you gonna do? This is like the uh it's like the new Mazes End deck. Yes, it's uh, these are your gates. 
Only yep. they're legendary now instead of just putting them into play. <laughs> See the truth. One and a blue for a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of those cards in your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If this spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand, put each of those cards in your hand instead. How are we cast how are we taking advantage of this in standard? I want you to I want you to acknowledge that even if you're not taking advantage of it, it is still an anticipate at sorcery speed, which is a playable card. I acknowledge that. Okay. In standard, I don't know, but this is definitely a very like this is Snapcaster um mission briefing yeah yeah but that's uh. the blue god thing what is that what's a blue god what's a blue god oh the new chandra that we haven't discussed that's true yeah wait with a teferi uptick i don't think no that doesn't oh that's another good a three mana chandra you can you can minus her and target it from your graveyard I just think this card is good. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, Kefnet. Yeah, if you copy it. Yeah, if you if you reveal it. Oh, wow. That's strong. Yeah, and if you, you reveal it with Kefnet. It for one. Yeah, you draw. Oh, my God. That's bonkers. <laughs> oh, that's a deck I want to play, dude. Oh, there's a lot of blue cards that seem real strong. I agree. I agree. <laughs> this set's nice. Shacklegeist. A 2-2. Two, two, another spirit for two. For one and a blue. Um, again, this is a card that probably we'll see play, and I didn't even read the text yet, because I know it's a spirit. It's a 2-2 flyer for two. Shackle guys can block only creatures with flying. Okay. Any two any two power flyer for two, I expect that from. Tap two untapped spirits to tap target creature you don't control. I mean, that's not bad. I've All yet right. to see anything that tells me spirits are playable. Well, I'm not talking about standard. Like, there is a modern spirits deck. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you there. And also in historic, they already said that some a couple like rattle chains and some of them are coming back. Historic's so weird because it's not based on any sets, right? Like, I yeah. just have to be like, oh, what cards are they going to print next week for historic? I, nobody knows. <laughs> uh, probably you know, just a couple. It's, it's so random. I wish it was more. I wish there was more of an, a guideline for for that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Shacklegeist, I think it's good. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I don't like it. Okay. I won't put it on the list then. I won't put it on there. <clears throat> Shipwreck Dowser. Five mana for a 3-3 three, three with Prowess. When it enters the battlefield, return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. This card's also interesting. Because it's an upgrade on cards like Archaeomancer or Is It Cronark. Is It Cronark was a 2-2 two, two for five that had this ability. This is a 3-3 three, three for five in one color with Prowess. I mean, it, and it and it helps you trigger prowess itself. Yeah, it's giving you a spell that you're going to cast. It's just expensive, right? Archaeomancer was four mana, but it was a one two with no prowess. This is a three three with for for five for five with with prowess. So yeah, three 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 is very relevant in the fact that it can grow as well. I don't think it's going to see constructed play, but it is definitely an improvement on those other versions of this card. Yeah, I agree. Spined okay. megalodon. I love that this card is a megalodon. I'm really sad that it's a common instead of a, a rare or a mythic. Like, if you're going to make a Megalodon, as you guys know, I have a, a, an affinity towards Megalodons. At least make it at least make it big. At least make it good. Seven mana for a 5-7 with Hexproof. So that's going to be annoying. Whenever it attacks, scry one. It's not bad. I'll, I'll I don't think it's it. any good. I'll play it in limited. When you say it's not any good, you mean constructed, right? Yeah. Yeah, obviously. That's obviously. I don't think it's any good and constructive either. Should I change that to something like a positive statement? Like, f like, like, don't hit you with the negatives. Just be like, you know, well, wow, you're... this card has great art. <laughs> no, like you're not gonna because like if you say, I think we can read this card and both automatically assume it's not gonna see constructive play. No way is a seven mana five seven with hexproof gonna see constructive play. This is not happening. I'm gonna hit you with limited then every time that. Um... I feel like once we once we both. Uh, silently acknowledge because we're smart individuals that it's not going to see <laughs> constructed play. We can move on to the positives for limited, right? All right, I'm with that. Let's, okay, let's try that moving forward. Stormwing entity. This is a constructed banger. Three three flyer for five three blue blue. It's an elemental. It costs three less to cast if you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. So if you cast an instant or sorcery, it only costs two mana. It is a flyer. It has prowess. So whenever you cast the Dark Creature spell, it gets one, one plus one plus one. And when it enters the battlefield, scry two. I like this card a lot. I think this card is banging, dude. 
works with Opt, work, works with Frantic in, uh, Inventory. This card's good. <laughs> if you go turn three Opt followed by Storming Entity, Scry 2, like, that's just so much value, and it's just a 3-3 three, three that sits there. Like, it's also, like, Frantic. Yeah, you can play Frantic Inventory into this for two mana. If you play Frantic in Inventory into this, you're paying less than its, its original casting cost. So, yeah, think about that. So, for that, you're getting a four-mana flyer with prowess that drew you a card at minimum and screw and scry twice. That's really good. I love the, yeah, I like the scry. I like the prowess. Like, this could just be a 3-3 three, three that costs less. But it's not. It also has prowess, which is probably very strong in any kind of blue deck that you're playing with with things like Frantic Search or Opt in it, right? Yeah. Like, you can go untap, opt, Frantic Search, attack for five. Like, this card's good. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, man, I fucking love this card, too. Sublime Epiphany. I know you this, do. This card's got a lot of text on it, boy. Four blue blue. It's another six mana rare. Choose one or more. Counter target spell. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Target player draws a card. So... Keep in mind, unlike Cryptic Command, which you can choose two modes, this you can choose all five if you have the ability to do so. Let me I hear mean, it. Let me hear your negativity. Sweet. Oh, this you like sweet. it? Yeah. I Because you were like, I know you do. I thought that was going to be like a situation where you're like, I don't think it's that great. I think six mana is too much. It's not going to... Like, it is two more mana than Cryptic Command, right? It's not Cryptic Command. Let's be clear. But in the late game, this card is bonkers. <laughs> That I man, I I just I'm sitting here quiet because I'm like I just continue to read it and I'm like what's what's the floor for this card? In my opinion, the floor for this card really is six mana, counter your spell, draw a card, and I'm gonna return a permanent. That's I think those are the three minimum that you could probably do every single time you cast it, unless you're losing a game and you just gotta cycle it. Right, but I think creating a token and like the creating a token gives you so much more value. Like if you're able to like copy one of your one of your one of your creatures. Because it's standard. All your creatures are going to be good, right? Like, you're going to have... I, I hate to keep saying it, but Dream Trawler, right? Like, that's a, that's a creature you'll have on board. Like, I think if you're... Once you're able to counter... You, to create a copy of a creature, it go, this card goes from good to exceptional. Yeah. Rob's scratching his ear right now for those who are just listening. Yeah. I, I think this card is great. I, I think, you know, the flexibility of it, again, is 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 huge. Um, It's just great. I just like this card. Put it on a list. It's oh, it's on there, buddy. Oh, okay. Teferi, Master of Time. What a controversial dude this is. Oh boy. <clears throat> Card's good, man. What do you think? You like this card, don't you? I think it's. I We've think we talked it's about it a bunch, man. I think it's broken. I I I don't. You think, think it's broken? Realize. I do. I think it's I broken. I definitely don't think this card is broken. Oh my lord. This card this card's broken. It's not broken at all, dude. Okay. Um, all right. That's it. Listen. All right. Tefri Master of Time. Two blue blue. I'm gonna read it for the people at home in case they don't know what Tefri does. Two blue blue for a Tefri with three loyalty. You may activate loyalty abilities for Tefri anytime on any player's turn, anytime you could cast an instant. So for the first time in magic history, you could activate Tefri's loyalty abilities on your turn, then on their turn. Uh, plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Literal no card advantage whatsoever. Just looting. You're just looting. Negative three, target creature you don't control phases out. Okay, so you can... You can... Plus one Teferi on your turn, he'll go to four. On their turn, you can negative three to kind of protect him. And then he goes to one. Negative ten, take two extra turns after this one. I mean... All right. Again, I know you and I've had this discussion before a couple of times, right? I I don't I don't look at this card and go looting is broken. Time stretch is broken. Protect itself is broken. The fact that not only can I activate this more than once in a turn cycle, I can do it when I want. That is broken. They they got to stop doing this stuff. This card is broken. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go on record and saying I do think it's decent. I think it's playable. I don't have any issue with its playability. I don't think it's broken. Jesus, man. I'm, listen, I'm going to laugh because there are going to be videos and people are going to clip it where you're trying to kill this freaking Teferi 
and you, you're, you're it's not even your turn yet and you're setting it up and you're like well i guess i can't kill it because you can phase my creature out on my turn like okay but when, when a creature comes back from phasing it can attack that turn right well he would phase it on your turn Phasing MT. I'm just curious. No, no, no. Yeah, they no, they phase it on their own turn. No, no, no. I'd phase. So, so if I have Teferi and you're trying to kill my Teferi on your turn, I would activate my Teferi and phase out your dude. Correct. So you but on my it. next turn, when it comes back into play, I can attack with it, right? I know that, but let, let's think about three mana Teferi. Like the the bounce effect from three mana Teferi. Well, I guess that's a bad example because that's. Because of uh, of you know if a creature has haste, then I guess it's kind of the same. I, I get what you're saying, but the fact that you can just do this every turn, at any time, I'm telling you, this is stupid. It's just broken. It's definitely I, I, okay. So this is where Rob and I differ. But like <laughs> we said, neither of us think it's a bad card. I, I don't think this card is unplayable. I'm not on the impression that Teferi is going to be in the bulk bin. I think it's good. I don't think it's broken. I I don't feel like I'm conveying the way I feel about this card. Because again, I I really? just want to just said say, it was fucking broken. I know that, but like so, like a broken card, in my opinion, is like a card that should never have been printed. Um, not so much that it just straight dominates everything in the format, and it needs to go away. Right? We can all agree. Well, most of us <clears throat> with a brain can all agree that three mana Teferi is broken because it alters the way we have always played the game of Magic. Well, it invalidates not- a card type. Right, like that's the thing. That's the I think that's the broken part of. I don't think just because it changes the way like we play Magic doesn't. I don't think that in and of itself makes it broken. I think the fact that Teferi three mana invalidates an entire card type that fills your deck. Right. So here's the thing. Right. So what you just said is what I why I'm saying I think I'm not conveying myself. So what you just said was because it invalidates a card type, you don't think that makes it broken. So that's why that's the point I'm trying to make. I think that does make it broken. Right. Like. Oh, you're saying it does. I'm saying the fact that three mana Teferi invalidates instants and the times you may you may use them, that is why three mana Teferi is broken. Okay, right. So, right, exactly. So, in my opinion, the way I look at it is this is altering the game that we've always played. This is a one of card. You've never seen this before, and it's it's just stupid. Like it's it's broken to me because they had to print this card. They had to make this one card that can do things that every other card ever printed can't do. But I don't think these abilities are anything to get upset about. If my opponent loots on my turn, I don't think that's a huge deal. If so they, they phase out my the one... Spell. Well, yeah, but they could do that with a Merfolk Looter on my turn. Like, that's not... I don't think that's just a huge deal. Oof. We'll see. Okay, like da- like Duretti. Duretti is a four-mana Planeswalker that lets you draw two and discard two. Like, just because you're doing it on my turn, doesn't it doesn't have any fundamental difference. Like... <laughs> So I think I think it does, right? Because it, it's it gives you an option of something that you can do, but you don't have to. There there are probably times where I want to flash in a let's say in a blue deck, I want to flash in a creature, but you 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 cast a spell and you force me to go. Okay, well I can't do that now, so I'm gonna loot, get rid of this creature that doesn't deal with whatever it is I, you're doing to me now, and oh I found the answer now because I had that option. That's just I ugh, I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm gonna go on record and say I think we'll be okay with Teferi Master of Time. I don't think it's a. I don't think, I don't think the rule that's breaking is as bad as Teferi Time Raveler. I think that card is shitty and oppressive. But we'll see. It's on the list. We'll see. Yeah. It's how's that, how's that sound? It's definitely yeah. on the list. I don't. I. I. I don't. I definitely don't um, think you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? I. It's. We can't. We can't tell. Right. We can't tell until we see it played. All right. Teferi's Ageless Insight for four mana, two and blue blue. Legendary enchantment. If you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So does this mean if I draw three cards, I draw six cards instead? If you would draw a card except the first... Yeah, I would. Yeah. Like, so for every card, it's replaced with two cards. Correct. I I like it. I think it's It's all right. It's good, but it's expensive. It is expensive, but I feel like you could probably snowball this into a victory. This card is this card to me is fine on four mana if turn three you played Royal Silence. Well, that's interesting because you can plus it. Yeah. Or or Teferi even like you could Teferi plus Teferi oh, turn yes. four play Teferi Insight and then bounce something of theirs draw two cards. Oh, 
Yeah, see, now we're talking broken here, man. Now we're getting to broken territory. And also, like, any card you draw on the opponent's turn, if you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards. So if you opt on their turn, you're drawing two. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, I think, this, I think this card's good. I've never seen this card before until just now. Oh, wow. Breaking barriers. Teferi's Protege, 2-3 three for 3, 2 and a blue. Draw a card, then discard a card for 2 mana and a tap. That's just your typical looter. I'm not excited. Yeah. Teferi's Tutelage. There's a lot of Teferi cards in here. 2 and a blue. <laughs> I wonder why. 2 and a blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. So if you have Teferi's Ageless Insight, you're drawing two cards and discarding a card. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. Okay, it's a mill. It's a mill enchantment. Okay. I think this card's very good. Really? I do. Hmm. That's interesting. I I think that I think that uh, I isn't there a three mana enchantment right now in standard that mills? I don't I don't actually know, but probably isn't there always a three mana enchantment of some sort? Also, I, I, hey man, with Teferi, Master of Time, you're milling two two cards on your turn, two cards on their turn. Plus, no more than that. Well, four, four on your four turn on your because turn. Of your because of your draw step. Sure. That's yeah. That's <laughs> I think this card's good actually. Do I put on the? Do you want me to put on the list? The only re- I keep there's two things I want to say about this card. The first one is I could see this card popping up. You remember when Michael Majors won a GP with? Um, um, is it Sphinx's tutelage? When he just out of they out of nowhere the 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 blue red Sphinx's tutelage they the mill deck they they won a GP with it. Um, I can I, see that happening. I actually don't remember that, but that, I could definitely see it. Yeah, and then uh, the other the other thing I want to say is I every time I look at this art, I'm like I feel like they went like this is the poor man's version of Teferi art here. Like I feel like that's not his face. <laughs> you know, it doesn't actually look like him that much. That's actually no. kind of hilarious. <laughs> This is like the older Teferi. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Look at look at the image on your on your background right, right yeah. now between us. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you completely. It's like the it's like the it's like the understudy for Teferi. Yeah, uh Teferi Teferi in the middle looks like he's about to dominate somebody, and then Teferi on the card looks like he he just left the grocery store with a bogo and he's happy about it. <laughs> He's counting. He's, he's counting like, I got the amount of money he just he's, saved. That's his receipt. That's his CVS receipt because it's four <laughs> feet long. So, yeah. I just <laughs> use my points. <laughs> tide, tide skimmer is the next card. Four <laughs> mana for a two three flyer. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures with flying, draw a card. I won't be doing that in constructed. That's for sure. <laughs> Talarian Kraken six mana for a four six. There's a lot of Krakens and Sea Serpents and Whales and things in this set. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When you do, you may tap or untap target creature. Okay. I'll be doing that in Limited again. That's fine. Seems alright. Tome Anima. 3-3 three, three for 4. 3 and a blue for a, a spirit. Tome Anima can't be blocked as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. So it's unblockable if you've drawn two or more cards. It's not bad and limited. Definitely not bad. Again, limited I agree. All. Again, agree with you. Yeah. Uh, unsubstantiate is a card that did see some play. One in a blue for an instant return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. So it's a bounce spell when it's when the creature's in play, or it's like a remand type card uh, if you want to counter anything on the stack. Basically, I like this card. It'll see play, and I I wonder if it's better than Aether Gust. Either guess putting it on top is big game. Yeah, for sure. But this also does hit non-red and green cards, so it's hard to say. It's definitely a card that might fill that gap once Either guess rotates, but right now, Either guess is still probably king of the hill. Potentially, yeah. I mean, unsubstantiate is just more flexible. Um, depends on the depends on the meta, right? I still put Medi- it on the list because the card itself is good. Oh yeah, you definitely should go on the list. I think it's going to see play. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the card's fine. Vodalian Arcanist, another reprint. 1-3 for 2, 1 and a blue. Add a blue. Spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Okay. I, I could have sworn this this flips into something. <laughs> no, you're thinking... Yeah, there's definitely a card like this that does flip, but this ain't it. Yeah. It's, got a, it's not good enough. 
Uh, Waker of Waves, another whale, 7-7 seven, seven for 7, 5 blue-blue. Creatures your opponent control get negative 1, negative 0. Oh. 1 and a blue, discard Waker of Waves, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. This is good. What? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. This is this is good. Two mana, can't be countered. Discard this card, and you get to you Look get to uh, slide a hand, at instant speed. Okay, that's actually wow. That is interesting. I just didn't expect to see that ability on this card. Yeah, and you put and you put the the card in your graveyard, which that can be very relevant. Hmm. This might go on the list. I think it should go on the list. That's but fascinating. I, I was just going to say the same thing that Ancient Surian just said in chat. Is it just feels worse than Shark Typhoon. Well, they're doing different things, though. Yeah, if, well, for sure. Selection is real. I mean, Shark Typhoon for two mana, you're not going to get anything. You're just going to draw a card. That's a good way to look at it. You know, I mean, they're doing two different things. Plus, like, this is a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 in the late game. I don't know if you ever want that. It's interesting to have it in your deck because, like, this is a card. Like, this is just a spell you'll play, right? But in the late game, if you're like, hey, I got eight mana, you can just play a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. It's not a card. You, it's not a 7-7 seven, seven you're going to want to play in your deck if it just does that, right? But it's yeah. still there. It's still a 7-7. Seven, seven. I think it goes on the list. I like it. I, I, I like it, too. It's actually really interesting ability that I've not seen before. We're overloaded right now on draw spells and cards that find you cards in blue. Like we've seen like four or five great ones. This is a this set is full of them. Yeah. Oh, oh, this card is a banger too. Oh four for one blue, a wall with defender. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. Wall I'm gonna brains. assume that was sarcasm, but I'm gonna tell you the next card on your list is a real banger. Okay, this one's not a banger. It was oh. sarcasm, and you win the prize. So we'll go to Wish Coin Crab. Also <laughs> not a banger. I feel like you lied to me. A two five for four, and it's a it's a cutie. He's a cutie. He blows bubbles. But I'm gonna go to the next card now. <laughs> and we're on the black cards. Unbelievable. We're already done with the blue. That was that was something. All right, we gotta we gotta we gotta rush through these guys because we're all, this is. Yeah, woo! we're taking way too long. Yeah, but I feel like we're not really. But there's like a lot going on. I think. Alchemist's Gift, first black card, one black for an instant target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains either a lifelink or death touch until end of turn. Good spell and limited. That's it. Done. Arch Archfiend's Vessel, for one black, it's a one, one, with lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it. If you do, create a five, five demon with flying. This card's good. I think this card is real good. <laughs> Put it on the list. It's real good. It works like with Luris. Just, it has so many things going on, right? Like, it's a 1-1 one, one lifelinker. Fine. Sure. Big deal. But, like, there's so many ways to, like, make a 5-5 five, five demon with this card. Yeah. Especially if you have multiples. Like, okay, cool. I'll rally the Ancestors for two of these guys. I'll make two 5-5s. Five Card's real good. I agree with you. Bad deal. Five, six mana for a sorcery. Draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. Six mana, I'm never happening. I'll just play Read the Bones. You can keep your cards. I'll, I'll just rather Read the Bones. And I'll just lose two. I'll play two Read the Bones. I'll draw four cards, and I'll lose four life. I'll take all the hits, guys. I'll, I'll take all the cards and all the life. I think I just blacked out from all the mediocrity that you just spit out. <laughs> Blood Glutton. Four, three, for five with lifelink. Let me tell you something. It's got light. It's got. It's a vampire, and that's relevant. All right. Okay. Caged zombie. Three mana for a two three two black. For a zombie, each opponent loses two life. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn for two and a tap. In my opinion, this card is great. In two headed giant. <laughs> All right. So when we play M twenty one two headed giant together, seems good. Carrion Grub, four mana for an O5. God, they, uh, like once I read the casting cost and the stats, I'm just like, all right, I'm already, I'm already, I'm zoned out already. Carrion Grub gets plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creatures in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, mill four cards. So if I have like a three three in my graveyard, it's a three five for four. 
like this has to be a five five for four to be any to be to be any sort of co- competitive card, right? This card has to cost three mana for it to be competitive, in my opinion. I think for four mana, you're just ask like Juzum Jin does it wouldn't it wouldn't be a, a standard playable card right now for four mana. <laughs> I would, uh, Helior in chat said, if you have a 7-7 seven, seven that you cycled, like, I get that, but let's be honest, at the end of the day, yes, a 7-5 seven, a seven, is huge, but it can still get chump blocked, it doesn't have evasion, I mean, it, like, that's, that's your peak performance, you know what I'm saying, that's your, that's your, your ceiling on it. What if and we cycle that, like, 11-11 eleven, eleven green dude? The, uh, the Meganoth, or whatever the Titan thing is? No, still, it's, a, though, it's, it's a Godzilla, bro. Yeah, whatever it's called, but, um, the regular name is, like, Meganoth or something, isn't it? I don't think it has a regular name. It's just a Godzilla card. I don't know why oh, okay. I'm like this. <laughs> That's true. This does work with the whale. Yeah, you're right. You discard the whale, but still, this card's garbage. It's four mana is too much. I do agree with you. I do agree with you. Oh, Crocs is interesting, right? Oh, wow. What if you go Croxa into this as a 6 5? Is it not good? I don't. Plus, like, then you're escape. Then you're fueling Crocs as a escape. Fuck, maybe it's not terrible. I the haven't s- thought about Crocs. The self mill is decent with the escape cards. It just seems too expensive. Like four mana is is expensive. If this was three and we just had that discussion, I'd be like, okay, you know what? With Crocs, I can definitely see it. But still, four mana is just too much. <sighs> Guys, I'm really on. I'm on the fence with this card. I I can see the potential with it, but I don't. I agree that four mana is a lot. So I can't even tell what the hell's going on in the art. <laughs> it's. You know what? Don't worry about it. Crypt Lurker. Four mana for a 3-4. So another four mana card. It's a horror. When it enters the battlefield, you may sack a creature or discard a creature card if you do draw a card. It's cool unlimited. Yeah. I would definitely play it to sack a 1-1, one, one, draw a card, or discard a yeah. land, draw a card. But let's go to Death Bloom Thalad, another limited card. 3-2 three, for three. <laughs> a fungus. When it when Death Bloom Thalad dies, make a 1-1 one, one Saproling. Okay. It's a reprint. Okay. It's a reprint. Demonic Embrace. One black black for an aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus one, has flying, and is a demon in addition to its other types. Plus three plus one and flying. Not bad. You may cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other cost. So it just keeps coming. It's kind of like a like a Rancor or like any of the, uh, like any of the enchantment cards that had uh, Dredge. Yeah. This card's broken i think this is very good you think this card's broken all right let me go let's go one level lower than broken this card is like very very good i think consistently being able to give any creature you control plus three plus one and flying with evasion is pretty good this card's really good yeah i think if you if you get this card unlimited you're probably unable to lose like making every creature a flying threat is pretty pretty bonkers yeah yeah i think it's on the list oh it's on there okay duress I'm going to put that on the list, too. Yeah, you should. Okay, Duress is on the list. Let's let's move on. We don't have to read Duress. If we have to read Duress, this is an advanced level podcast, and you should probably listen to something a little more basic. <laughs> Eliminate. Oh, wow, this card is uh, phenomenal. One and a black for an instant. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. This card's awesome. Love it. We'll see play. This card is great. I agree with you. I don't think there's anything much to say, right? Like, it kills relevant planeswalkers, it kills relevant creatures, it's two mana. In- instant speed, like, it's just so good. It's really it kills good. an Uro that, that's came that's come back, like, it's, it's yeah, very Yeah, because you, it kills a Croxa as well, because their casting costs are two and three. Yeah. Fetid Imp, one and a black for a one-two flyer. Uh, for one black, it gains a death touch until end of turn. And the, the benefit here is that it's a cutie. So. <laughs> I think uh, in limited, this card actually is very good in limited. Like, you, if you can pick two or three of these, this card's very good in limited. Oh, yeah. Flying Death Toucher is just great. I yeah, agree with you. Eating away. Yeah. Finishing Blow. Five mana, destroy a creature or planeswalker. I mean, we just have way better options. The art is pretty sweet, though. It's very, like, it's got a very Japanese type feel to it. Yeah, it definitely does look different. I like the uh, I like the smoke in the on the top right of the card. Also, the the creature in or the the thing in in the card image looks like Hellboy. You look like Hellboy. Gloom Sower eight six for seven five black black for a horror. When it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses two life and you gain two life. What was this ability called in Amonkhet? Uh there's an ability that. 
Oh, yes. Um, yeah, if they block, they lose life or something. No, uh, well, I remember a card. I remember a card that 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 did that. I don't remember flick, the ability. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was a flicked. Yeah, a if, flicked, the, if the creature it, was yeah. blocked, the controller loses X life, right? Yeah. Either way, seven mana for an eight six horror that doesn't even have evasion is not going to see any play. It's also a common gourmand, <laughs> gourmand. It might be gourmand. That would be funny. Um, for six mana, you have a five five flyer demon. As initial cost to cast this spell, sack a creature because this guy this guy's got to eat. He also has <laughs> trample, so trample fly a flample. When it when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So basically, why doesn't okay? So basically, every every player sacrifices a creature for this guy to come into play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's cool, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, I agree. With, I agree with Jeeves that the art and the name it should be a legendary demon. But I will say this: I think it's actually pronounced "Go Remand." Go Remand. Cast him as a man. <laughs> See, that's funny. All right, Grasp of Darkness, the other premium black removal spell in the format. Uh, or in the set, rather. Black, black for an instant. Target creature gets neg four, neg four. It's still very good. Card card is very good. It's always been good in standard. Um, I think it's it, it'll probably see play. Bob the Sheep, thanks so much for the reset, buddy. I appreciate you. He's Bob the Sheep. Grim Tutor, one black, black for a sorcery. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand. Shuffle your library. Lose three life. What do you think? Uh, um, This is interesting because... Uh, it's so funny to see a card at three mana with this ability because obviously the three life is kind of meh. Um, but I don't know if this sees play. I don't either. I, I wrote a whole thing about it. I'm like, there's not a lot of decks who give a shit like what card you get. Like, there's no decks that are looking for one specific card in their deck. You know. Yep. Generally, I'm I'm like playing five cards that I'd probably want to tutor up, and they're playing. I'm playing them as four ofs anyways. So, like, I don't need one card to win a game in, in standard anymore. I got like five different things Ex to win me the game. One hundred percent right. Like I said, like my, my argument was that like if you're playing like a green a uh, soul tie deck, right? You have Nissa, Euro, Questing Beast. Like, I don't need any one specific one of these. If I draw any one of those instead of a Grim Tutor, it's probably just as good. Yeah. And like Hajigolashi said, crazy risk reprint fiscally. I think financially, the, the, that's the biggest impact this card is going to have. Yeah, I think it was like a couple couple hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm still going to put it on the list because it's a very iconic card. It's a strong card. Yeah, you card. should. You want to open it, but I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to be any kind of uh, any kind of impressive card in standard. Yeah, I still think it'll actually be kind of expensive because it's a mythic. Um, was this a portal card? Yes, it was. It was a portal card. That's what I thought. Uh, hood hooded blight fang. One four for two and a black. A snake with death touch. Whenever a creature you control with death touch attacks, each opponent loses one and you gain one. So if this guy attacks, he attacks as like a two four with, with that gains you life. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. This card seems good. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's a like one four a, it's for like a... three is like, it blocks everything. Yeah, I get that. Death touch is definitely relevant. It's kind of like a bad hell, hell, hell rider. Hell, 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 rider. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. This card seems decent. Like, like you just attack up. Like, just if you get to hit any planeswalker, you kill it, right? Like, fair. I don't know. This card seems strong. And like, if you have like a couple death touchers down already, and you play this guy, like, then they get to kill it. So, I don't know. This card seems decent. I, I think this card's got a lot going on. The art is sweet. I I'm gonna. I'm going to plus one it. The one thing that I do actually like about this is if I stop and think what kind of cards am I going to play in this deck, it's that one one mana, one one knight that you can pay three mana and draw a card, or um, the one mana, one one death touch lifelink uh, vampire. So the funny thing about those cards is if I'm playing a creature deck, right, those cards all die to like, um, what's the, uh, a Clarion. Definitely Clarion. This yeah, survives this guy, it. this guy doesn't, right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can see it. I also think four toughness for three mana is a pretty sweet spot, right? Like, that's not bad. I like it. I like that, too. Yeah, I think this card's got... I think it's got a lot going on. I think it's good. It blocks everything. The The one thing it doesn't do is block Questing Beast, but Questing Beast can't block it either, so I guess they're even. Yeah. Infernal Scarring. One in a black enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and has when this creature dies, draw a card. Okay, that's that's interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. Karavek the Spiteful. Two black, black for a 3-2. Legendary Human Warlock. And other creatures get negative one, negative one. This card's interesting. 
This card's really good. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you first you have, like, Knight of Souls Betrayal, which gives all creatures Nega 1, Nega 1. This is just a 3-2 that does it. And even if they kill it, like, a lot of times the damage could already be done just by him, him being on the board for a little bit, you know? Yeah, I mean, it fits in. It fits into to matchups, right? It doesn't fit into decks. It fits into matchups, and I think that the matchups it comes in, it's just it's backbreaking. I think this card's good. Yeah, this card's real good. And also, like, if it stays on the board, like all the one power, like even if they have like even if they're one twos or like the hooded, even if it's like a uh, a hooded blight fang, like then it's just an O four or O three, you know? So. Yeah. Kite sail freebooter, another reprint from Ixalan, but you know, very good. We all know how good this card is. This card will probably see some some amount of play, I'm sure. Humans are there, man. Human humans is real close, I, and this is a kind of card that can put that de- that that deck over the top. Yeah, I agree. And this card is just a duress on a on a body, yep. and uh, you can get it back with your idol, your your idol, your white idol card, endurance idol of endurance. Yeah. And uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Liliana, Waker of the Dead. I like this Liliana a lot, actually. You this like reminds those medium me... medium powered planeswalkers. I, okay, <laughs> I think this card is very reminiscent of Liliana of the Veil. Plus one is each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life. So now all of a sudden, if your opponent manages to play their hand out, they take three damage from not being able to discard a card. That's plus one is now a win condition. Three damage a turn adds up quick. It's like the it's like the rack basically, right? Uh, if they have if you have the rack in play or like any kind of like shrieking affliction or whatever that card is called. Um, you know, now they're taking damage for not having cards in their hand. Plus one is strong. Negative three, target creature gets negative X, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. So, cards in your graveyard, not creature cards, not instants or sorceries. If you have three cards, it's negative three, negative three. It's just, typically, this is also going to function similar to Liliana of the Veil, where you're killing a creature. Negative seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. This is A, it's from any graveyard, and it gains haste, and it's every turn. I think this card's good. I, I think this card's very good as well. I agree with you. Oh, you were being sassy before. I was being sassy. It's messed up. Yeah, I think this card's great. I think this is a solid four mana planeswalker for, for black. Uh the plus one is I think the the each opponent losing three life, like it Yeah, I mean so many times you have Lily on the Veil and they they have no cards and you have like one or two cards and you're like, well, I don't want to play this, so I guess I just don't plus her because now you just plus her because three damage adds up quick. So Yeah. Especially with Proxa. Yeah, we're when we discussed this on the podcast um before, the 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 cool part about this card is that it is a win con on the plus one, even if you're not um it's not just discarding a card, it's a win con, so. Yeah, and if you can have, like, a Kite Self Freebooter that can take their last card if they're like, I'm going to hold a card to make sure I have something to discard, right? Like, you could just make them discard that and then plus one, and then you just take three. Yep, I like All it. Right. All right. Liliana's Devotee. This this guy is something. Two, three for three. Two and a black. A human warlock. This is the, We haven't seen many warlocks. There's a couple warlocks in this set. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing on the first one that we went over. I'm like, Warlock? Zombies you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay two. If you do, create a 2-2, two, two, a black zombie creature token. I have, I've never seen this card till just now. The art on the right side is terrifying. The art on the left is very Comical. sensual. <laughs> uh... <laughs> but I like this card. I think this card is very good, uh, seeing this for the first time. And it's great in multiples. It's kind of like a zombie lord. Yeah, think about it in multiples. Uh, I'm going to pay four, make two, make two, two, two zombies. Oh, by the way, they're four twos. Also, it's at the beginning of your end step. If, a, if it's, a, it's a creature died this turn. It doesn't have to be your creature. It doesn't have to be their creature. Yep, it could be a token. Yeah, it, right. That's all the other thing I was going to say. It doesn't matter if it's... So if a zombie died, you can make another zombie from that zombie. Like zombies begetting zombies. So I think those are the two relevant factors, right? Like... Plus, zombies you control getting plus one, plus O oh, does make this kind of like a lord. Wow, here's a thought. Is he wearing Liliana's robe? Not, well, not not that one, but yeah, maybe. Actually, maybe. Maybe he just, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to move on. All right. Let's Liliana's go. standard bearer. Three, one for three, two and a black for a zombie knight with flash. When Liliana Standard Bearer enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. 
Uh, we've seen cards that have this kind of yeah. effect. I just don't think they're any good. They never work out. You never end up drawing any cards. You're gonna because you're gonna end up keeping up mana every single turn. And yeah. the one time you have no mana is when they're like Wrath of God, and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> and you're gonna draw nothing, right? Like this happens all the time. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Liliana's steward. Gosh, she has so many things. One black for a one-two. Sacrifice Liliana's steward. Target opponent discards a card. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast the sorcery. I don't think this is great. Like, it's just a one-two for one. Tap it to make them discard any card of their choice. Like, okay. This is boop. It is boop. Hey, put a little... Put it in the... Put it in the... Eh, I forget. <laughs> Malefic Scott, Scythe. One and a black for an equipment. Uh, it enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each soul counter on it. So it's going to get plus one, plus one. Whenever an equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on it. So it just gets bigger the more equipped creatures die. And uh, equipped for one. No. no. I, I don't well, I don't think so. I'm going to say no. Ma Why you keep looking behind you, man? Something wrong? Because, no, I, randomly I can hear stuff. And because I have my headphones on, I don't know if, if Astrid's getting home. Oh, wow. How long, when do you think she's going to, it's like, it's, it's like nine o'clock right now. Yeah, I know. She was getting her hair done. How long does it take? Uh, hours. Masked Black Guard. One and a black for a 2-1 with flash. Masked Black Guard gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for three mana. All right. Good limited. Limited all day. Yeah, this Massacre is Worm. Massacre Worm. Three. Black, black, black for a 6-5 worm. When it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get neg two, neg two until end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they lose two life. This card's, this card's a banger. This card just wins games. It's so good and cute. It really too. does actually just win games. <laughs> I'm like, how many? You got one, one, two, 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 one, one, two, two. All right, take ten. <laughs> I got six, five. Yeah, this card's a banger. This is the first time this card has been reprinted, as far as I know, since uh, Mirrored and Besieged as well. So oh, Interesting. Yeah, this was always a card. This is like, like a $20, $30 card. It was up there. And uh, now it's a reprint in Mem 21, so... When I saw my Mythic Spoiler, I thought of you. Nice. I appreciate it, Thwok. Mind Rot. Two and a black. Target player discards two cards. A classic. Classic trash. Yes. Keep in mind, for those who are uh, unfamiliar with Massacre Room, the, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they lose two life claws. Sticks around even after the neg two, neg two. So on future turns, if you kill something, they still take two. All right. Necromensha. One black black for a sorcery. Choose a card name other than a basic land card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. What do you think? I think this card's good. Um, I think it'll, it may see sideboard play depending on what um, decks are dominating standard. Um, I think it's better than the old three mana one that we had that where if you uh, take a card from their hand, then they draw a card. Yeah, like, I mean, this is, yeah, right. This is this is just a variation on all of these, like, um, I can't think of the other one, the, the four mana one. Unmoored cranial, Ego. Cranial Extraction, Unmoored Ego, um, Lost Slaughter Legacy. Games. Yeah, like, there's a ton of, like, this is just a very popular trope for a card. And they just try to keep giving you, like, let's give the opponent something because taking cards out of their hand, like, three... Like, if they have three copies of a card in their hand... Like, the problem is, like, if they have three copies of a card in their hand, you're ripping those three cards out. But with this one, you're, like, giving them three two twos, which is probably pretty good. Yeah. Um, But also, like, yeah, it does get rid of the Titans. Like, you can get rid of their Euros and their their Croxas. Um, I, yeah, I think this card is fine. I think cards like this always end up seeing some amount of play. So, yeah. yep, goes on the list for now. <clears throat> Peer into the abyss. Four black, black, black for a sorcery. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life. Round up each time. This card's wild, dude. Um, yeah. But it's too expensive. I don't think so. I think there's other cards. Wait, how much is Underworld Dreams legal in standard right now? It is, yes. Well, that's interesting because this just kills <laughs> them. It's, it is, yes. 
Are there any other cards that like penalize their opponent for drawing cards? Uh, yeah. The uh, oh no 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 the Teferi one was whenever you draw a card, right? I'm gonna put this onto the. I'm gonna put this on the list. I think you just like you just like the art. I actually don't like the art at all. Really? But I, I think the card is. I think the card has like drawing half the number of cards in your deck. Like that's like twenty cards probably when you cast this. I don't know, man. Losing half your life, like if I'm at 16, I'll go to 8 and draw 20 cards. Like, I mean, that's just the thing I'll do. But, I don't know. 7, card... seven man is a lot of mana. 7 mana is a lot, but it's a, it's like a one-card win condition, right? Oh, it does work with the Tef with the Tefri thing, because you could just target yourself. Yeah, you draw 20, and they mill 40. They mill 40. Yeah, Ooh. yeah I think Maybe. there's a lot of cards that work well with this. I think this card, you could set this up so that there's a couple different enchantments you can have in play, where this card just kills them on the spot. Yeah. Pestilent Haze. One black black. This is a card Rob doesn't like. Choose one. All creatures get neg two neg two until end of turn. Or remove two loyalty counters from each planeswalker. I don't think it's good enough. Okay. That's fair. I mean, Cry of the Kernarium is probably better right now because it exiles the creatures instead. But, you know, I think this is a nice card to have. It's nice that it exists. Uh, removing two loyalty counters from each planeswalker is a nice versatile option. But I understand. I get it, Rob. Yeah. Rise again. Five mana. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for playing. Thanks for playing five mana zombify. Sanctum of Stone Fangs. One in a black. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. This is the, this is the shrine, by the way, because it's a sanctum. Each opponent loses X and you gain X where X is the number of shrines you control. Two mana is not bad for this. But again, it's only as good as the other shrines that you're that you're dealing with. So, yeah. I don't think they're personally. I don't think they're that good. Yeah. Um, but what are you gonna do? So yeah, I don't think they're any good. Sanguine indulgence, four mana for a sorcery, three and a black. It costs three less if you've gained three or more life this turn. So again, you got the the black white life deck where you want to gain three life. That's your goal. Return up to two creatures from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, that's it. That's not exciting. I know, right? I was like, oh, I, I was really working for this. Honestly, if this card just said black mana, sorcery, return two creature cards, you still I'd still be like, I'd be like, it. eh. <laughs> S Silver Smote Ghoul. Two and a black for a 3-1. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Two and a black, one and a black, sacrifice it, draw a card. I like this card. I like this card. This card's good. I mean, you, you literally bring it back to play for nothing, for no cost, as long as you gain yeah. three life. Like, that's really good. Yeah. And, and then you can, can just do sack it and draw a card. Speed. Yeah. This is... Oh, no, it's the beginning of your instep. Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, I thought it was each. Still fine. Still fine. No, 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 still good. Still good. It also triggers It also triggers the, um, the zombie lord and gets pumped by it. Oh, that's true, because you're sacrificing this yep. to, uh, to creature dies, so you pay two. You get this back, you get the other thing back. Yeah, this is a lot going on. This card seems good. And it's a zombie vampire, which is pretty interesting because that's a those are two creature types that are not often combined here. Yeah. Skeletal Archer. Skeleton Archer. Three and a black for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. This card is great and limited. It's not yeah. constructed playable. Tavern mm. Swindler. Oh, this is another weird card. Pay three life... Flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain six life. It's a 2-2 two, two for two. One in a black. I mean, this card's not playable, right? Like, Do, no you, <laughs> do you think you will ever activate this card, ever? If the life gain deck is strong enough and I want a consistent source of life gain, uh, maybe. Because I think if, you, if you're lucky enough to break even with this, you're just winning. You're just, uh, you're just triggering your, your if you gain three life cards, you know? I don't think so, though. I think it's a, I think it's a stretch. Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> oh boy. Thieves Guild Enforcer, one black for a one-one with flash. Whenever this or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. Another mill card. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, this gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. Oh, we're getting interesting now. So it's a three-two with death touch. If they have eight or more cards. I just don't think it does anything on its own. I think the easy way to look at this card and say, wow, that looks like a Delver in standard. But the problem is it doesn't have evasion. It doesn't have evasion. And also it's like, 
So are we milling them or are we trying to attack with big creatures? Because why is this a 3-2 if we're milling them, right? Like you're trying to mill, but you're also trying to make this creature bigger and formidable. So yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like it, it doesn't really know what it wants to do. I don't think it's good enough. I don't think so either. Village writes, one black as initial cost to cast the spell, sack a creature, a draw two cards. Notable thing about this is that it's an instant for one mana. I think this card's good enough. This is definitely good enough. Um, this card will see play. I agree. I think this triggers card... triggers your zombie lord. Oh, that's true. Three Use mana. it with claim claim, claim the zombie. firstborn. Yep. I think this card's good. It's got a lot of synergies. It's instant, so if they try to kill your guy, you can just sack it in response to draw two. Like this card's nice. Wait a minute. Um, I'm waiting. That thieves guild enforcer. It had death touch. No, it does not oh, have oh. death touch. It gets it if you have if right. It gets plus two plus one and death touch. Yeah, so it's not a one one death toucher with flash. It's a three, no. Two, otherwise, it'd be good. One. I think yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, then it's good. Then it's because it's a kill spell, right? I mean, well, yeah, and then like you have like you've had cards like that, like scorpions or the snakes or whatever that are one ones for one with death touch. Those are great playable cards. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it doesn't get death touch unless they have eight cards in their graveyard is is a bit much. Yeah. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, two and a black for a one three. Whenever you gain life, an opponent loses that much life. Creatures you control gain life like until end of turn for five mana. Does this go into the into the life deck? I don't think this card's any good. I think this is a trap and, and it will not see play. Really? Yeah, because I think that I think that this card is like we're getting like think about how many times we've mentioned the life gain deck just from reviewing the cards we've seen. And we're finding all these ways to gain life. Um yeah, and they is... all I, I think it's too much. Really? I don't yeah. like I mean like this just like if you go turn three veto, turn four revitalize, right? Or Oath of Kaya. Like they take they take six from Oath of, three from Oath of Kaya, I guess. Three from Revitalize. Like that feels like it adds up. Uh you know what? I will say something. Someone in chat just mentioned cat oven. This is playable. <laughs> I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Vito on the list. Put put my dude Vito on the list, please. Oh now he's your dude. Now he's your boy. That's my man, Vito. All right, nice. It's actually, it's, it's, it's actually pronounced Vita. Vita. Oh, wow, Vita, huh? With an A Vita. at the end? That's an interesting pronunciation. Yeah, it's a misprint. Oh, Walking Corpse. This is a good zombie. This is a zombie for the zombie deck. 2-2 two, two for 2, and that's the end. All <laughs> right. Witch's Cauldron. One black mana. For one and a black and a tap, you can sack a creature, you gain a life, and draw a card. I love this card. This Do you is really? so good. This is so good. Is this just an upgrade to the cat oven? I mean, it's obviously costs mana, but like drawing a card. No, it's not seems... an upgrade because you can't loop it, right? But it, it this card's really good. Oh, because it's not food, right? Yeah, I got you. All right, I'm putting it on the list because you say so, and I do think there are applications for this card. Like being able to draw a card and gain a life simply for sacking a creature at instant speed is very, very good. The way I look at it is we were just talking about village rights. Now, obviously, they're different cards, right? But village rights is a one-time use thing. And when we were talking about, like, claim the firstborn uh, or other ways to use village rights, you had to have that card when you had the other card. This card sits on the battlefield and can be used whenever. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. I think this is good for one mana. Okay, I think it's I, I think it's also fine. I, I don't I don't find any flaws with it. Um, yeah, drawing a card is just where you're really selling me here. Like if they go to kill your guy, you can sack in a response, gain a life, draw a card. Like it's it's yep. got a lot of versatility. It's got a lot of flexibility. Yeah. All right. That was the end of white, blue, and black. It took a little longer than we expected, but that's oh that happens every single time. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Freshly Brewed wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, be sure to follow and subscribe on YouTube and on Twitch. Check out ManaTraders.com, Cool Stuff Inc. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.